wherever and whenever you are, and welcome back to Phoenix Iwaki. It's good to see you all, and it is an absolute pleasure to welcome all of these wonderful people. Sorry, I'm cropped. These wonderful people. There we go. <laughs> As we are jumping into one more of our fantastic one shot roulette sessions, and I have been looking forward to all of these guests. Very much so. It's been a while, and we had a very good reason to get them into the show today because they have a fabulous project which Streamlabs has already already been shouting about there. They have recently released the fantastic Uncaged Goddesses, as seen lurking over Dylan's shoulder. I see it. There it is right there. <laughs> and it is um, an absolute pleasure to have you all here today. So, out there. Yeah, here we go. Okay, a huge welcome to you all. And let us find out who all of you are in the real world. And we shall find out who these characters are um, in just a moment. So... Without further ado, ah, thank you, Soundscape. <laughs> Let us go round the screen, starting with the project lead of Uncaged Goddesses. Wendy, hello. I welcome. was going to say, That's is you. that me? <laughs> that is you, uh, I believe, unless my facts are wrong. You're like, no, <laughs> in my defense. <laughs> In my defense, I was co-project lead, and Jess Hi. also was part of the admin team, so ah, I had a moment. Go. But yeah, <laughs> I'm uh, Gwendy B, and um, I was project lead for Uncaged Goddesses, along with David Markuski and Jess Markram, who is also on the stream, and Laura Evans. Uh, and do I introduce my character now also? Uh, not yet. Not yet, please. Okay, okay just, then just that's real me. Life stuff. Okay. Yeah, thank and you, that's, that's all I'll say. Indeed, and if you want to know where to find uh, Gwendy, there is all the stuff over there. Boop. Oh, no, I made it shorter than that. <laughs> I just went with Gwen. Yeah, it might just be Gwen. <laughs> there you go, it was. <laughs> okay, there is the Twitter there to go over there and to get all of the news of what's going on. And the reason I found the majority of these lovely people... Jess, hello. <laughs> That's me! Hey, I'm Jess. I'm Angry Nerd Girl down in the chat, and I am uh, the DM of Three Flings every Friday on Angry Nerd Girl, uh, where three of these lovely people play almost every Friday, well, two of them play every Friday, and one of them plays uh, every couple of Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern. And yeah, I, I write and stream games and sensitivity read, and I was the writing director of Uncaged Goddesses. I'm stoked to be here. Thank you. Yes, and it was um, the No Kid Hungry charity stream, wasn't it, last year? when uh, I became aware of each other and released the Kraken on the Three Flings. <laughs> you did, that was amazing. <laughs> oh, yes, the Kraken. <laughs> and that was the best use of the Trident of Fish Command I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Very done, then. Very good, then. <laughs> okay, and moving on around... Ink! Hello, my name is Ink. I uh, usually play Three Flames with the people, most of the people on the screen, other than Trevin, sorry. Trevin Dillon. <laughs> Trevin Dillon. <laughs> I love being able to speak English. Uh, you can find me in chat uh, as at these defense or on Twitter under the same username. And I'm very happy to be here, even though I can't speak. <laughs> That's a pleasure. That's a pleasure. Okay. And someone who, the only person I have managed to play with before in a little sneaky, sneaky offline playtest stuff that we had to have some fun doing. Um, Dylan, welcome. Hi, yeah, I'm Dylan. Um, for Uncaged Goddesses, I was the author for one of the adventures, uh, the Everon adventure, Dancing with the Fury, uh, which Jess was my sensitivity reader on that. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. And Dylan is also the creator of the fantastic campaign guide, which we are using here on the channel to tie together all of the Candlekeep Mysteries one shots into one fabulous campaign. There is the link for that over there, and their Twitter is there on the screen. Okay, and last but not least, by any measure, Zen. Hi. Hello, I'm Zen, um, and I am an illustrator, and while I did not illustrate for Undercage Goddesses, I was mostly back support, and I play on Three Flings, which is playing the Goddess Adventures. Absolutely. Um, I did, however, do illustrations for some of the rest of the Uncage books, which is why I'm involved in the project. <laughs> mm. Yes, indeed. I think um, if... Where did I... I think I put this... Hang on, let me try and remember quickly wrote the command and trying to remember what the command is now <laughs> what was it what was it i think i don't know if it's just encaged should i put is it encaged i'm gonna double check Engaged anthology i think you I wrote the second adventure the three that's ever played yay yep. and, did I and i kind of felt really bad because i was like oh no this is a ghost story and you all are going through it like you're going to be saving these people Oops. <laughs> it's fine. We figured it out. <laughs> it put the man back. 
Yeah, they yeah, did. We, did, we, we, did we saved the man from a Rusalka and then was like, oh, he deserves this and threw him back in the lake and we're like, yeah, we finished the adventure. Yep, cheers. it was great. Cheers to that. <laughs> And there is the um, t- um, various links there for Uncaged Goddesses um, up over on uh, DM's Guild. Still in the most popular titles up there on the front screen. So just just go to the DM's Guild, the homepage, if you want to find it. It's very easy to find because it is going very, very successfully and deservedly so. Right, okay. Now, we are here to celebrate that fabulous release, but... We do not know how <laughs> we're going to do that quite yet because this is one shot reddit so any of you who are joining us for the first time this is a completely randomly generated style of play our characters here grimdrom fekrin olenala trevon and hail were completely randomly generated on dnd beyond um, their magical items their classes their backgrounds um, has to be multi-class any the the occasional single class build that appears gets tossed out there was a cobalt that has gone out. I think maybe that's your cobalt there, Jess. <laughs> there was a, there was a cobalt. I know we were sad too. We were sad too. <laughs> they had to they had to be good, said goodbye to. But the um, <laughs> we haven't we haven't found the mysterious you know elusive five class build yet. <laughs> Nobody's ended up with five level one classes. But we have a couple of threes in today, so doing well, doing well. Okay, so that is all set and decided. Okay, our players have looked at those various interesting builds that they've been um, assigned with, and we have only one, two more things to figure out. Where are we going, and what are we doing? So, I need some dice rolls. Now, where is my picture? Oop, there it is. Okay, so, Gwen. If uh-huh. you could be so kind as to roll me a d20, let's see where we are going. I will absolutely do that. A uh, seven. A seven. Okay. We are going somewhere we have never been before on One Shot Roulette. We are heading, this is a good one for Dylan. I'm going to have to make sure I try and get my information correct with, oh. a, with an Eberron aficionado <laughs> in the place. We are heading to the city of Sharn. That's oh. Did someone say Sharn? <laughs> oh, yes. No, no. I'm ready. I have a monologue prepared. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, sorry, several people in chat haven't heard it. I, I've heard it once or twice. Fun <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, is always recruiting followers, uh, <laughs> ready to spread the good news of Char. Indeed. Yeah, indeed. Uh, well, I'm sure we'll get into it at some point. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Was it, were they the the back back cover image? Yes. Uh, right? yeah, I I, I had to make sure that the uh, goddess most represented <laughs> in the entire book was Char, so I threw her on the back uh, cover in addition to yeah, all the <laughs> book stuff. She's great. Uh, and misunderstood, and very powerful, and very disrespected, especially in the wiki. Whoever writes the Forgotten Realms wiki, find me, I will fight you in the parking lot of a Wendy's. <laughs> Gwen is biased, don't worry about it, don't ask questions. There's one objectively correct best goddess, and it's Char. I will not be taking questions at this time. Coming soon, pay, pay, pay to view on uh, Angry Nerd Girl. <laughs> it's the, 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 fight, the fight of the year. Okay, <laughs> we shall see how that goes. Okay, um, so yes, we shall see what is in store for our adventurers as they journey to Sharn and the various layers of the city that are there as it floats there above the um, the ocean river. Dylan, help. <laughs> What's right there? Yeah, it's, it? it's, the da- it's the Dagger River. It's yeah. the river, isn't it? Yes, okay, thank mm-hmm. you. And it's in, that, it's in that manifest zone, isn't it? So, which makes it um, lighter than air, so if it, the layers of the city can float up. And Okay, good. <laughs> See, really I do fun. this as a... I don't know why I do this to myself. I just I challenge myself. It's like, where are we going? I don't know, but I get to see these new places. Huzzah! Right, okay, we are headed to Sharn, so that is where our adventurers will appear. Now... Any of you lovely players of mine who have eyes on stream, could I ask you to not look for a moment? As we are going to switch over and have a look at what is in store, but I want to show the people back home so they can play along. And we are going to generate the one-shot plot. Thanks to our wonderful friends over at Chaos Generator. Let me put that in the chat there if you want to have a go with it yourself. Lots of really cool random generator tables and things over there. And we are going to be using their one-shot generator, Oop. which is over here. Okay, you can still hear us all, can't you? Yes, you can. Okay, good, good. 
So here I we got go. really excited to click that link and then realized it would bring uh, the picture back for me. So I had to click out really fast. <laughs> Ooh, a present yeah. for me. Ooh, it is for me. <laughs> okay, here we go, here we go. So, there you go, folks. As you can see, we have various random one-shots. There are 10 random ones that I've set it out, so we can roll a d10. I'm going to shuffle it up a bit so you can see I'm legit here. I'm just clicking and clicking and clicking and clicking. There we go. You're not all undead. <laughs> okay, I'm going to keep that one because in case you roll a one, that's the only one I can see at the moment, so that'd be kind of fun. Um, okay, so, Jess, could you roll me a d10, please? Nine. A nine. Okay, so count them with me, folks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. We ignore the first part because that has been generated randomly. But there you are, folks. No spoilers in chat, please. <laughs> this is just for us. <laughs> okay. So I would like now for all of you lovely people to introduce your characters. Okay. So who are they? What's their um, class makeup and uh, their lineage? And what are they doing as purple mists roil up around them and whisk them away on adventure? Okay, so, Gwen, please. Uh, all right, I, my arm is tired, but I'm still not looking at the stream. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've covered mine with the character sheet for now. I, I could yeah, minimize I mine, up another but... <laughs> I'm just looking the other way. Uh, so I'm playing Gremdrom, um, a Huden Gallus monk wizard uh, who looks like a quail, uh, but like a, a really just, you know, wise, intelligent, nimble quail. Um, I've been sitting on top of a tree stump. I get standing. I've been standing on top of a tree stump for the past seven hours, just sort of <laughs> like a bird. Uh, if you cast Detect Thoughts on me, um, it's elevator music. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. Yeah. Okay. I'm and, just I'm sorry. communing with nature, but <laughs> the only way I know how. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> seed speak, seed speak. Okay. So, uh, do you get a rather depressing conversation about why the tree was chopped down? <laughs> so, oh, no. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think it was just, you know, it's time. Uh, it wasn't like a, a clean chop. It was just sometimes it's very windy. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a California quail, quail, and it's dry as heck in Fantasy California. Uh, so the trees, they do just fall over sometimes. Uh, you know, as you do. As you do. We've all been there. Indeed. Yeah, indeed. moment of Fantasy California, Gwen. Oh, no, I, I meant dry as heck. We've all been there. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Now, um, Jess, who are you and what are they up to? Uh, I am playing Farkern Dergal, a forest gnome who used to be a uh, gambler. She is a clockwork soul sorcerer, and she can use the power of Mechanis, or Mechanis, if you will, to uh, twist the odds so that they're ever in her favor. And then she got caught doing that and threw a table because uh, she's a sorcerer. And that's when she discovered she has a bit of barbarian in her as well. <laughs> and then she fucked right off to the forest uh, to get in touch with her druid side and uh, didn't know much about survival, but luckily she can uh, speak with all of her squirrel friends who brought her nuts and berries and other small foods to survive. Uh, and she was just hanging out, talking to the squirrels, and uh, playing some Three Dragon Nanty with them. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Were you winning, though, as a gambler? That's the question. Well, right now, I'm I'm losing a lot of my nuts. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> okay. Thank you, thank you. And um, next up, we have Ink. Hello. Uh, tonight, unlike normal where I am playing Ophelia, I will be playing Olana <clears throat> Olanala Yathalina. I cannot pronounce this name because for <laughs> right. some reason it's the, the it's randomly it's generated it's name decided I needed <laughs> six A's in two names. Olanala Yathalina. Yes, she is a Mark of Shadow Elf. Uh, with one level in Paladin and four uh, levels in Warlock, so I would like to imagine uh, 
beginning as a paladin and then having a moment of convening with a higher power, in this case, the undead, and then committing herself to uh, a warlock path. Because you can't exactly be a holy person when you are very much committed to not allowing graves to remain. <laughs> And it depends which god, I guess. <laughs> I get, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, I would like to imagine at least when everything is happening, uh, Olanala is not posing as herself, but rather as someone else and is in a market trying to make a decision and a deal for some money. When, you know, I guess the conversation is done now. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yes. Dylan, please. Yeah, so I'm going to be playing uh, Trayvon, who is a raptor, warlock, blood hunter, rogue. Um, <laughs> yes. And the way I'm envisioning him, he is he appears less as a as an actual bird and more of like a sort of indistinct dinosaur. Sorry. No, he's not a dinosaur, <laughs> but that's a good idea. More of a, more of like an indistinct sort of winged humanoid. Like you can't tell if he's a dinosaur or a bird or just like a dude with wings. It's just like all sort of <laughs> try to focus, and it's just like changes. Um, but he's dressed in this garish clothing that seems more aesthetically uh, pleasing than it is practical. Um, and currently, he's soaring over a bubbling sea. Uh, each bubble holding a different like dream inside of it with it within its glossy sort of iridescent surface you know down beneath them yeah thank you okay and Zan please uh yes yeah, so I am playing Ha Aheo which um is a reborn furbolg so um basically I'm not alive I'm not dead there was some mixed up with the paperwork I think um, however, my memories are very skewy, and I forget where I am, who I am sometimes, <laughs> and I think I'm, I'm just, you know, I've settled in and I'm just stirring from a year-long nap in the middle of the woods somewhere, <laughs> um, so kind of like covered in moss, and, uh... I, I've kind of like stirred every once in a while to like help out some of um, the animals of the forest, but I've just been chilling. Okay. What's your flesh? Uh, my my flesh is um, it, it doesn't look all that healthy. It looks like it may be like growing some moss or lichen, um, but I mean, uh, otherwise I don't look dead. Just maybe unwell. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's it. <laughs> okay. Hanging in there. Hanging in there. <laughs> yep, yep. All right. You are in your various locales, your various parts of the multiverse. Um, Olanala has the, the shortest distance to travel, as being a um, Mark of Shadow elf. I assume they are Eberron based <laughs> um, at some point, somewhere. And you um, start to feel these mists rising up um, around you and obscuring your view and as they do a strange disembodied voice talks to you all um oh <laughs> hello um uh, sorry to uh, abruptly uh, take you from whatever it was you were doing um don't worry, you've just got a, a small, a simple, simple task to complete, and then um, you'll be right back wherever you want to be. We can pop you right back where you were, or anywhere else you would like to visit. Um, just let us know. Um, our, our people will be in touch. Um, now, um, how's, how's Shan this time of year? Anyone, anybody familiar? Anybody been there? It's, it's a lovely place. Yeah, big, big city. Lots of different layers up and down, you know, um, floaty Probably bits. Probably very rainy. Probably um, very rainy. It can, can be can be quite rainy, yes, yes, but um, you know it's it's very green, it's very fresh, um, you know clean streets thanks to that. Um, now, I have one request of you. Um, you are going to um, meet up with some fellow adventurers, and um, I'm afraid 
there is uh, something we need retrieving from someone in Sharn. And you have all been chosen to come together and uh, pool your amazing talents and um, deal with this problem. Um, now, you will make um, contact with a good friend of mine in the city when you arrive, and um, I think hmm, you need to uh, figure out a best plan of action with them. They're, they're a local, a local. You know, they know, they know what's going on. They know, they know what's what the lie of the land is and things like that. And um, um, <clears throat> yes, the, the one problem. Um, we do need you to retrieve an item um, from a uh, vampire. <clears throat> Okay, and I'm, I'm sure I'm sure to be fine. I'm sure to be fine. Um, Wait, the, the, you know, you, you said an item. What item? I mean, it, it, if you just want us to, to retrieve any item from a vampire, I'm sure that wouldn't be too difficult. But if it's oh. something specific, I think we need to know what that is. Don't worry, don't worry. Um, your your point of contact will have all of that information for you. You you never know who's listening in the mists. Yeah, these um these mists are kind of on on loan from some rather. Dangerous people. Um, uh, just a you know, very handy transport system. Um, look, uh, don't worry, don't worry. Um, Stefan will have all of the details for you. You know, normally everything. I'm not worried, but having repeated ur urgences of not to worry is... No, I'm still not worried. Oh, good, good. Um, it's quite it's quite nice, refreshing, actually. We get quite, quite a panicky bunch in here, usually. <laughs> I don't think I really have much to worry about at all. Splendid. Well, um, um, Stefan will, will meet you on the other end. Um, you should arrive anytime soon, soon, soon. <laughs> the voice kind of fades off <laughs> into the mists. <laughs> and it starts to darken. And... You find yourselves in a room with a single table. And there's a lamp hanging over the table, illuminating just that one section of the room, disappearing off into pools of darkness in the various corners. And there's a table with a chair. And on that chair is a figure. Striped shirt, open at the neck, dark waistcoats on, and a trilby enshroud enshrouding their face in shadow. Oh, it's definitely the back room of a gambling house, and Farker is not happy about this. <laughs> um, oh, no. Did we, like, arrive in the same position as we were where we originated? Yes. <laughs> He's just lying on the okay. floor. <laughs> So Ha'aheo is uh, just laid out on the floor, just kind of like in, in a sleeping kind of position, and just like creaks as he sits up. <laughs> I'm drawn I wasn't cheating! I wasn't cheating, I lost every nut I have! <laughs> materializes standing, but like as though there's like a three foot stump uh, that isn't there anymore, so I just have to like get totally stoic followed by like a massive fluttering of feathers as i just like <laughs> land <laughs> you know like how chickens fall mm -hmm. not flying it's falling in style <laughs> i can't fly but i can glide downward mm -hmm. <laughs> the figure stands up there's a scrape of the, the chair across the concrete floor and he looks Mists dissipate. New arrivals. One thought dead. But back in the game. Good to see you all. We have work to do. Welcome to Sharn. My name is Stefane. They stand up. You are, you're giving me shivers here. I love it. I hope they're the good kind. Oh, very, very. <laughs> so, this is the bunch that Arafor sent to me. We can work with this, we can work with this. I'll 
Make anything work that he sends. Always ready to do my part. Always ready to get to the heart of any situation. Steady. <laughs> it points to Trayvon. <laughs> if, a, if, a, if a hawk could smolder. <laughs> so. How much do you know? How much you do you know, need to be told? Well, I know that, that butternut is partial to almonds, but Skeeterpaws prefers walnuts. And when you get down to it, uh, Rumpelstiltskin is really going to steal your almonds. You don't want to go in with that one. And something about uh, taking something from a vampire. Uh, Heyo ha- ha- goes, these names that you said, are they for small creatures? Oh, just the squirrel friends. I thought you were being clever and using aliases. But it's you're just your squirrel friends. I can see that could cause some confusion. But do not worry, we shall get you on the right track. Back to back. Facing the troubles of the streets. Overcoming this will be no mean feat. We have to make our way to the mansion of Count Fabio. I'm sorry, did you say Count Fabio? Like the one who got hit in the face by goose? I haven't heard tell of any such story, but... (laughs) <laughs> uh, can I do some sort of history check to see if I know about this Fabio? <laughs> are, are you from Eberron? There's, well, the thing a... is, mm. my background is I'm with the um, Witchlight Circus. So they're basically definitely... they're a traveling dimensional circus that goes every place. Definitely been to Shan. <laughs> yeah, roll me a history check. Okay. That's a 19. Excellent. How could you forget that fateful journey of the Witchlight Carnival to Sharn? You were counting around with excitement. Of course, you know, you visit every location every eight years. You'd heard that the next spot in Eberron was Sharn, this glittering place of lights and sounds, defying gravity. You were so excited. And that's when the Count and their entourage chasseed into the carnival and took over. It said the Count has powers of mind control. And they used their powers for ill, skipping all the lines, getting all the best treats, making themselves the ruler of the carnival, crowned at the end by Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. Even those powerful fey entities falling under the sway of this vampire count. Oh, he's a right jerk. I remember him. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, go for it, go for it. I was gonna say, uh, you will see uh, Olanella like take a piece of paper that she was holding as if she was showing it off to someone and take it and like stuff it into a interior pocket of a jacket and uh, look in the direction of uh, Stephane and go, so I suppose the more interesting question is, uh, what do you know of us? Not enough. What would you say is your primary talent? What oh, brings you not. to these parts? What you got for the mission? Oh, you don't you don't like surprises then, do you? Depends. If we're having a party or, you know, on a birthday perhaps, but out there on the mission with a fiendish vampire in the mix no no i do not oh but 
anything can be a party. It's just a matter of the occasion. There's, <laughs> there, there's lots. There, there can be lots to celebrate. For example, uh, taking things back, winning money. You know, <laughs> money, of that nature. <laughs> I'm good with a crossbow. Yes. I don't have one, though. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Here you go. And they reach into the back of their belt and they pull out a sleek black hand crossbow. Well, that's fantastic. Perhaps this will come in handy. My father Thank friend. Thank you. I will just tuck it under my wing. Aim true. Regret the voice I have locked myself into. <laughs> Fire swift. Make sure you, they meet their end. Now, all of you. You've got presents in there for all of us, then. I'm a resourceful person. Is there anything you have need of? Oh, I could think of a whole heck of a lot. <laughs> um, you know, if you have any sway with some of the Faerun uh, guard departments, if you could get a few debts cleared, get a couple of bands removed from a few pubs, that would do me really well. Not so much for this mission, just, you know, general lifestyle stuff. Tell you what. You complete the task put before you today, and I'll refer you to my friend with much greater sway. Arafor Tan, the one that brought you through the mist, he's the one who'll sort you out. An opportunity not to be missed. Oh, a nice little pun there. <laughs> but, uh, that was a cheap rhyme. <laughs> it's basically the same word. <laughs> my, uh... A lot of times when folks say they're going to sort you out or get you your reward, they, they kind of mean they're going to do away with you to get rid of uh, spare uh, spare ends, as it were. And I, 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 you know, I can't say I'm up for any of that kind of thing. <laughs> You've nothing to fear with Arafo. He's above board. He answers to those in Bytopia. He answers to the Lord. I, uh, <laughs> wait, I was going to ask which one, but you seem to have cl clarified that it is not um, a Lord of the Plains, but rather a Lord of uh, a plot of land. He's based in Biotopia, and he knows what's going on. He knows he's got to do the right thing as he's living in the home of that gnome god's pantheon. Oh. He's one of your lot, Valkyrie. A fellow ah. forest gnome, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I do hang out there. <laughs> Can I insight check this guy? <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> uh, he's making me nervous. <laughs> oh, that's bad. That's a 10. I have no idea. <laughs> no problem. You're fine. <laughs> well, uh, he seems legit. Ha oh, hey, oh, would, would just be like, I was just thinking. It almost slipped through my mind, but um, I have some healing ability, but I'm not sure I can cover this many people. Oh, you don't have to worry about me. I will be protected. Oh yes, I, I have the, a little, uh, room. not, not quite a lot. It's kind of uh, past past experience. Peter out, don't worry about it. I don't want to get hit. <laughs> that that is the best way to do it, honestly. <laughs> yes, there are a few people I know who enjoy it, although usually that is not in combat. That is in a variable situation. Pierce, my worries are unfounded. And they they just kind of like creak their hands into like this. And it's just like and I think I have a I think I have a crossbow in here as well. We'll see how how much I remember. I have it. 
Oh, I, I have a different cro crossbow. Um, I think I'm much... Not much better, but I'm better with my fists, I believe. Are we comparing Say crossbows? And Trayvon will pull his crossbow. <laughs> Can I have it? Uh, it's a crossbow it party and nobody told me! I oh my god, god is this great this. big stick! Olenar Can I have it? Crossbow and be like, well, this is very awkward. We do appear to be matching. One of us is gonna have to change. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Hmm. Uh, I will look at uh, Grand Job and say, uh, do you not already have one tucked there under your I'm an expert. Seven? I figured it might be best if I carry them. That sounds reasonable, actually. I'll give my crossbow to Grimdom. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I never question an expert. Uh, yeah, I, I imagine, like, surprisingly, since uh, Ahaheo has been sitting on the floor this entire time, you just see him, like, lean forward and then rolls back and, like, kicks up onto his feet. <laughs> it's like, it, it is smooth motion that none of you were expecting. <laughs> I will get down on the ground and do the exact same motion to be like, oh, me too! <laughs> are, you, are, are you too round to do that? <laughs> it's just like... He seems like, fascinated. Oh, no. seems fascinated by this round bird performing the same maneuver. This perfectly spherical bird. <laughs> lights out on its back, and then you see its tiny little bird feet just kick up in the air for a second. And then it looks like it's stuck, and then there's a, a big old wing flutter, and it gets back up, and it's just like, me too! I also know that trick. I wonder if it's easier or more difficult with wings. I don't know. I guess I've always had them. I don't think I had wings before. Now that we've all gone to know each other... Time's a-wasting. We should head out out there and stop all of this social bird basting. Hmm. Right, that sounds good to me. Yes, let's set some... Uh, what are we getting exactly from the vampire? I was not clear on that. I need to step over here just for a second and grab a book. <laughs> oh, oh. Always going deep into the woods. Got it. <laughs> yes, wow, deeper, the quest deeper. giver's gone away. Anybody want to play three dragon eight? <laughs> I don't know how. Yeah. Oh, uh, is that cards or dice? Cards, I'll teach ya. Oh. Any up, folks. Oh, I, t I tend to enjoy dice games usually. I will watch. I was gonna say, I think I have a yeah, I have a set, but I don't think I'm trained it at the, all. And so. there's ha 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 who gets out his own set of cards, but just starts doing card tricks. Wait, like, I don't I... have cards. I'm trained to three dragon ante, but I have a dragon <laughs> chess set. Between the two of you, okay. you make one complete. Don't gambit. worry, I have the cards. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna cards, say my cards are for tricks. They aren't for playing. <laughs> I mean, I had a thing where I had Elder Blast like specialty, and I didn't have Elder Blast until I switched to my spells. So I think that's just how the card the cards fell, apparently. I just asked the quest giver for the thing that my feet gave me. <laughs> you also asked everyone else for the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm the expert. What's your point? <laughs> Zan, can you roll me a d100, please? A gun. Oh, now this is getting real. <laughs> what is it we're retrieving? Yeah, we're sticking to the um, random nature of said quest. I would just find out for you. 79. A 79. Okay. That's how many Cape Strahd has. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm just imagining him with like a stack of capes that just drag behind him. No, <laughs> he's the first Strahd adventure. Time. It said he yeah, has all... like 49 capes or something. I can't remember. Time in Str the same direction. So there's just a stack of capes that are just trailing behind him. Strahd is oh so your state. It's all about, it's all Count Fabio now. Please go. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Me when it gets below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. You back when your heater broke? Same. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. Thank you for this, Zen. Um, we. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. I wonder which book that's from. So, we have a new item here that is a powerful powerful thing um you 
have been tasked as your friend leans in here. Stefan, we need to make sure that Count Fabio cannot return to his masters down in Kyber, the uh, rather hellish part of this world, and deliver to them a powerful item. It is fabulous looking. If it was used to make it a garment, it would be spectacular, but it has more power than that. It has the power to open a portal to anywhere. And I have heard tell that those down in Kyber are looking to trade it away to some folks far over the sea in a place called Riedra, as they are planning to bust through the defenses of a bastion of defense. Nope, defensive of defense. A bastion of, of um, what's the word I'm looking for? Ah, sorry, <laughs> mental block. Um, independence that still holds out in their lands, a place called Adar, protected from average teleportation spells and the like, but this device is so strong that it could break through their defenses and allow the Riedron forces to attack into the heartland of the mountains proper. It's called the Well of Many Worlds. Interesting. Hmm. I know absolutely nothing about uh, dreams or Riedra or any of that. That's great. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> You're feeling sleepy. <laughs> be careful. If, if, if Count uh, Fabio starts saying that, be careful. <laughs> now, if you can get this item to uh, our friend Arafor Tan, he can stop borrowing these dangerous mists from powers that should not be trifled with and use this well of many worlds to bring future adventurers into their quests. And it's a safer way to send us home. So, self-interest is also a factor. Indeed. So... Thank you for the sub! <laughs> Thank you. I was, to be, I was trying to be subtle about it. <laughs> don't break the moment. Don't break the... Oh, okay, Jessica. Thank you. We're for very us. annoying on our show about it. <laughs> oh, we are. Uh, I thought for a second when you started describing this, I was like, can I just hear a jaw in the middle of that? Same. I was just <laughs> like, my tiefling's house? What? <laughs> <laughs> Adar, Adar is a section of uh, a distant land called Sarlona, which the evil, mind-controlling, dream-occupying, scary folks called the uh, the Riedrins and the the Quarry, are, uh, and the Inspired are trying to take over. Um, <laughs> sorry, I do like to I do like to tie little things into our other campaigns that we have going on here. Um, that is not going to be very useful for anyone watching either because that's an offline campaign. But hey. <laughs> That's the one that's in Eberron. <laughs> so, as you um, are making your way out of this room in the wake of Stefan as he leads the party out, um, Farkarin, as you had very correctly um, thought, this door opens up and there is a, a whoosh of noise and smoke and sound as you find yourself in a bustling casino. Okay, this is this is called <laughs> this is called the uh, the the one shot roulette casino. <laughs> just all like roulette it. tables. It's really noisy. <laughs> just, the, just the spinning of the wheels and the clattering of the, of the balls. Um, <laughs> and cheers, Robotex. And you make your way out through the bustling space. Just a huge plethora of um, folks, you know, all gathered around, um, enjoying the um, time at the casino there. All sorts of races, all types, just all mixed in together, all, all having a great old time there. And um, 
Valkyrie, do you need to make a wisdom save or anything? Are we okay? Are we good? <laughs> Yeah, uh, Farkrin's, uh definitely wondered if anybody here wants to uh, play some Gwent or possibly uh, <laughs> possibly uh, some dragon, three dragon enti, some some dragon chess or uh, any of that. <laughs> is, is this something that I notice because uh, I kind of get the feeling that my smaller companion might need someone to watch out for them? <laughs> no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I just need a few hits and I'm good. That's we'll just, we'll really just play. We'll just play. Let's go. Let's that sounds Let's painful. <laughs> you need someone oh. to hit you. I can do it. Oh, are we going to play games? I love playing games other people. No, no, no. We could play some roulette. We could play some craps. Let's go. Oh. And we get the ranks while we are. Is, it the, is that the Okay. I mean, these aren't carnival games, so Ha'aheo is, <laughs> is a little bit confused. They don't remember seeing games like this before. <laughs> is it the ring toss? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure Grimdrom has no idea what's going on uh, in here. And everyone, like... somebody here has got to play Pazak. <laughs> <laughs> never been in a building this big before. <laughs> oh, never. Oh, there, there's a lot of these. That sounds terrible. It depends. It can be though. You, uh, you're kind of so like jostled as you're making your way through the space here, and um, a, a voice a lo like lower down says, "Oi, watch it!" Oh, oh, no, no, no. They lower down than me. <laughs> about to start level with you. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, no, 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 they shout out your name. Hola, how you doing? And you turn and you see a dwarf, a female dwarf, just moving moving towards you through the crowd. Um, it's Hilda, your good friend from your, your travels throughout Eberron. <laughs> oh, uh, turn and uh, like do a little. <laughs> a pleasure yeah, to see you. Sneaking through the shadows as always. <laughs> yes, there is much to be done. Uh, much to win and you're gonna see kind of like in between um, Olinar's fingers uh, there's like a die pulling between them and uh, she kind of looks it's like yes I feel quite lucky <laughs> excellent excellent so are you here to play I was I was supposed to be picking up someone here I've been I've been working some of the carriages um, you know some of the sky carriages here in Shan and um, my uh, my client is a, is a no-show Oh, who is that? Oh, oh just just some customer. I was just told to come and pick up pick up a client here at the casino. Oh, interesting. I mean, my next booking's not like for like an hour or so. Do you guys need to go anywhere? Oh, um, looking for the other compatriots. Uh, is there anyone from the, uh, from our ragtag group that is close to me? <laughs> Did everyone just like uh, just whoosh, throughout the casino? <laughs> I, I believe uh, Ha'aheo would be the uh, tallest, maybe. I mean, we've got some bird friends, and oh no, no, Trevon's tall. Yeah, oh, I really? just rolled randomly for it. I'm evidently six eight. Okay. <laughs> so uh, that's a big so I feel like uh... <laughs> yeah, I'm probably around six foot. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there is its spot. <laughs> Farkarin has disappeared. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like we have the two members of the group that are tall and therefore like the anchor points for the rest. <laughs> yeah, and Grimgrom is like right up under someone's elbow. <laughs> oh, baby. Uh, gonna... I, I would provide that elbow. Yes. Uh, going to gesture... nuzzle underneath and I'm like, ah. uh, oh, <laughs> gonna gesture over uh, uh, Aheo and. Uh, and be like, uh, is there someone you were supposedly looking for? Because, uh, my dear friend here is apparently without a client, and I'm wondering if that might help me whatever it is that's going on. Well, we could certainly use transport to get us nearer where we need to be. And that sounds reasonable. And he stuffs, like, 
little hors d'oeuvres that someone's passing around the casino into his mouth. Yeah. I'm, I'm just holds out a hand, like, up to you. Oh, here you go, my little friend, and I'll hand one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hug back under. <laughs> And then um, your friend, Stefan, the uh, half-elf um, poet that uh, met you in the back and uh, was your point of call here, um, comes over. He's like, he's like, ah, apologies. I was uh, securing our friends here and we are ready to go. We have the Oh, you are the client. Oh. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, that is is so And... Hilda's like, oh, splendid! <laughs> Hola, look, we, we have to catch up. Come on, come on, come on, let's go, let's go. Oh, yes. This guy, um, this guy comes out front. Ah, yes. Uh, kind of gesture for everyone to follow. And uh, kind of upset that we cannot gamble at the moment, but quite happy that at least we will be able to have transportation. Like I was going to say, if uh, if Barkerin is, like, at a, a table or something, uh, Trayvon will like uh, try and like grab him and come on, let's go. Parker is absolutely at a table. I'm like, oh gee, so this is a card? Wow! <laughs> How does it work? Which way do you turn it? <laughs> and you so put just, money on this? Oh do I, my do I need, goodness! I think I need have to just, fun! <laughs> I think I need a deception check. <laughs> <laughs> Parker is good at deception, uh, so that is twenty-two. Nice. Ooh, okay. Hey. Okay. Whoa. In which case, as you quickly manage to get one game in, any of your friends can jump in here as well. It is a, a gold piece buy-in. What game is it? It is called. Um, let's see. Ah, I don't know the Eberron Pantheon. Um, <laughs> Dylan, is there an Eberron, yes. Eberron god um, or goddess with, uh, to do with luck? Yeah, Aladra. Aladra, okay, thank you. So it is called Aladra's Favor, and um, it is a, a card game, and um, Farkarin, with that successful deception, they think they've got it in the bag. The, the house dealer thinks they've got it in the bag, so you get, you get to re-roll the dice if you like. Um, anyone that would like to join in rolls 2d6. Um, you can... Add another coin to roll another dice if you wish, and if you get a seven or a twelve, you are a winner. Yeah. No problem. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, I, the reason I asked is because I have a set of weighted dice in my bag. Fantastic. You also get to re-roll a dice. <laughs> you said I got to re-roll, so that is a twelve. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The house, the house only got an 11, so I'm going to roll that third dice. So they, they buy in for an extra dice, see if they get the one. I got the one! Uh, <laughs> I got so 12 as well. So, what do I, uh, so what roll 2d6. Do I do dice, um, roll 2d6, and you can choose. Actually, before you roll, you can choose what one of the dice is. Ooh, okay. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, you said a 7 or a 12? 7 or a 12. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm gonna make that one of them that is a one. I just rolled a six. Nice. <laughs> there yes. we go. Okay, so you roll your you roll your dice, and um, one of them just kind of plunks over very nicely onto the onto the uh, six there. Okay. Hi, hey, are you were you buying into this? Uh, no. I'm just watching. <laughs> okay. With a bit of interest and a bit of confusion, but not. But the interest is in seeing what they do rather than trying it myself. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> now, you're right, Gwen. The, the, the temptation to go Gwendrom is, is, is very... Right? Very I told you it was going to happen. I was but it like, sounds... oh, Gwendrom's going to be And then Jess being over but here sounds... like, who wants to play Gwendrom? <laughs> but it sounds like we're, sh we're shipping you. <laughs> shipping you with your character. Okay, oh, no. so... <laughs> I mean, you do love quails. It's true. <laughs> so, um, you um, are you just still tucked up under Ha uh, Yeah, armor? I think uh, you see Hi Haheo like kind of you know watching the scene, and then uh, you see like below the elbow, there's just like this little quail tuft that kind of comes out, and then these two like walleyes just like taken in the room. 
Yeah. Excellent. Can you imagine? It's like a shark, but it's like the, the little feather at the top. <laughs> yeah, it's a shark, <laughs> but the table. Goofy. Exactly. <laughs> um, Trayvon, did you, did you jump in there yet? You got, did you say you got a nine? Total? Oh, yes, I got a nine, yeah, yeah. Nine, okay, so that was uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, um, so yeah, um, Olinala and Farkarin, you both get two gold pieces, the house gets one. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they, uh, you are uh, welcome to try again, or they're like, the house, the house is like, double or nothing, double or nothing. Oh, I'm gonna look at Farkarin and be like, uh, I hate to cut us off, uh, but I think we should leave over our heads. We have a little bit of a uh, thing happening. Remember? Uh, oh, we're on a hot streak. I, I mean, <laughs> so this has six sides. <laughs> wow. The, um, yeah, we should go. The house, the house dealer, who's basically basically a green got snow, but with one of those green vis- you know, see-through visors on, and it's like a mm. massive you know, stub of a cigar out the corner of his mouth, and, and, he, and he's like. His eyes narrow when you suddenly say something very knowledgeable instead. It's like, you know, the facade breaks there and you're just like, okay, time to go. <laughs> uh, um, I believe, like, if Farkorn tries to break off again, Haeo would grab the, like, scruff of outfit and just kind of, like, <laughs> we're going this way now. <laughs> guide, guide. Okay, so yes, you um, are following um, Hilda, this uh, dwarven um, sky coach driver um, through the bustle of the um, main casino here and you spill out um, of the front doors past the huge um, halfling bouncer and as you go onto the streets there um, let me change this up Did a bit you see here the huge halfling bouncer yeah, <laughs> yeah that always so happy we read and enjoyed our uncaged goddesses uh pregens with our halfling fighter hey <laughs> old boy <laughs> um okay so yeah you break um onto the streets there and it is um just a dazzling sight as you come out into the into the um daylight <laughs> this this place was jumping but it was apparently daytime still and you come out into the streets here and there are people just moving around here and there all over the place and there are the buildings impossibly tall just stretching up and up and up to the what you imagined would be the sky but no you see the base of something else another layer to the city hovering impossibly suspended in the air above the layer that you are in and you see these incredibly tall buildings just stretching up as all of these folks go bustling about their day and you see a basically a wagon as you would be used to seeing it but it doesn't have any wheels on it, it almost has like runners on it like a sled and next to it leaning against it um, are two air elementals Smoking, which is quite a bizarre sight, because you can see it go, go down inside them and swirl around on the, their insides. And like a cigarette, or like they're on fire. <laughs> they're like yeah, they're having having a smoke break, <laughs> and and they 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 kind of throw them off to the side and like you know, um, do little little gusts of, of air to blow them out. Um, and uh, and they open the door and, and and gesture for you to to climb inside. And Hilda's like, nah, cheers, boys, cheers, boys. Let's go, let's go. Uh, uh, do, I'm gonna look toward uh, Grendrom and Parker and be like, uh, do you need a hand getting in? I know the, the step is not even very helpful for people over uh, five and tall. Oh, thank you. I got it. Yes. Uh, and I will just, um, I'll use my uh, freaking thing that I have <laughs> What's to, thing? to jump. Is it? Is I jump it? real good. Do you uh, have the Fantasy of Jordans again? I know, but as a bonus action, I can use my powerful feathered arms to propel myself upward a distance equal to half my movement speed. Uh, and I'm a monk, so I've got a 20-foot vertical leap. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> oh my <laughs> word! I love the idea of powerful arms as before you almost fell over falling to a 30-foot gap on the ground. I got stumpy little legs, okay? <laughs> but my Fantastic. arms are real strong. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Okay, so yes, you with a with a blur of wings, you um, <laughs> bounce up into the carriage, and uh, it, it's it's functional. It's not it's not luxurious by any means, but uh, it's it's comfy enough. 
and um, and Hilda's Hilda's like, hola, hola, come up here with me, come up here with me. So what what brings you to the big city? Oh, you know, yes, obviously, but that's not what I mean. That's trouble missed. That too, that too. And Stefan's just like. <laughs> um, and he, Stefan leans forward and is like, um, uh, take us up if you would. We need to go up to the uh, the next layer. And until there's like, ah, oh, retro chief, yep, yep. Nothing in this shop. Okay, right, let's go. Um, <laughs> sets off, and the the air, air elementals basically like a palanquin. Like the the air elementals like go in the front and back, but then just whoosh up. And there's that kind of that lurch oh, cool. in your yeah. stomachs as um, as you find yourself rising up alongside um, the buildings and up, and you see several other um, air coaches of various you know companies and uh, houses here, and um, you can see them you know zipping back and back and forwards. Um, nothing so organized as uh, you know the Star Wars. <laughs> Everything's in nice, neat lines. <laughs> no, just just chaotic all over the place. It's a, it's a miracle they don't uh, crash into each other. But um, as you um, just get gusted up through the air, um, Hilda's um, talking to you, um, Ola, uh, you know, Ola and Ola, and, and um, catching up there. And she's like, "So, um, you got a job? You got you found something? What, what brings you into the city?" So this is. Uh, I don't. Tend to stay in one place, but also, and I still have no idea how you managed to do this so well. Every time you lift off, it feels like everything inside of you just drops. Out of you. Get I, used to it. Get used to it. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine. Um, but yes, just you know, I used to do people steal from me. <laughs> and, you know, nice, nice. And she, she looks around kind of conspiratorially. It's like I thought. I thought it was a bit strange that you were going up top to the fancy bits. You know. Where all the where all the, all the posh folk live? I, for for me it is. However, um, and like pull out the papers from inside their pocket and be like, forget I'm going to stone with them. I'm like, not. And like roll it back up and stick it in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think so. You be careful though. You know, if you if you're going if you're going on the rob up there, you know, there, there's some dangerous people up there. Uh, as in many dangerous people, or as in a few of them that uh, know many people. Mm. Um, I mean, yeah, powerful people with powerful friends. Yes, that uh, that's a little concerning. However, I do believe at least, and like kind of look down toward uh, the people in like the palanquin below us and be like, mm. I mean, I, I don't doubt that there is a level of uh, capability and proficiency in this team. Although, I will keep that in mind. There is definitely something to be said about, uh, you know, keeping all the hairs in my head the same length and, you know, not <laughs> losing inches off my cloak. Watch yourself. You watch yourself, okay? Yes, I will do my best, but, you, do you, what? you know, always be out. If you show me where you're going, I'll 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 keep the uh, yeah you know, I'll keep the elementals ticking over, and we'll be ready to go. Oh yes, uh, I think that would be quite wonderful. I mean, you're you're seeing where we're going to be going. I have no problem if you notice it. I doubt uh, your client down there might not appreciate it, but I would. So it is completely up to you. No worries, no worries. Okay, so I'll be ready. I'll be ready. Now. Yes. Um, and as, as you're chatting away there, you're again rising up and rising up and you do start to see the river stretching off like a silver ribbon into the countryside um, beyond the city limits. And um, you see, it doesn't spread very far out the, um, in, you know, in the kind of horizontal plane, the city, but it does, just goes up and up and has these various layers and it's kind of built, the lower levels are built into the cliffside above the river. Um, and then the other layers are kind of hovering above. And you do see bigger vessels as well, larger um, airships moving about in the outer um, areas of the city and coming in to dock at um, various areas of the outskirts and the, the outer edge of the upper layers. And as you rise up through the space there, you um, find yourselves cresting out and over the edge of the layer above 
and pulling up at one of those almost like you know um, keys like a like in a, a seaport um, back to where you'd be used to and you pull up along the the jetty um, which is supported with a gantry and sticking out from the side of the um, of the floating section of the city and you find yourselves up above in the upper city so the ship slowly comes in and you jump off and make your way onto the mainland you know the, the solid ground as such as it is and um, then um, Stefan kind of calls you over into the side of the street uh, out of again still very bustling up here lots of um, people coming and going and like people staff um, on the various uh, richer houses and guilds and things that all have their um, piece places of business and um, homes up here and then um, some you know clearer clearly uh, richer folk moving around you know like um, a bit with a little entourage from time to time and uh, the streets are a bit more manicured here um, there's uh, nicer greenery and little you know sh flowers and things planted and trees um, along the uh, the boulevards um, and you find yourselves um, stood up there with Stefan and he's like right now we need to find our way to the house of this vampire any ideas of how to break in once we get there I have a few uh ideas I was going to ask what the likelihood is that uh, our dear host might be home. Given as it's uh, daytime, I think pretty high. Interesting. Okay. Well, I suppose we shall uh, create a plan and then, you know, have a backup in case uh, we need to try to talk our way out of things, as it might be. I mean, also, the good sleep. news, the good news is, if he's home and it's day, he's probably a sleepy peepee, -pee, yeah? I mean, vampire or that. I don't know if you should call people a peepee. -pee. <laughs> no? Because my dreams oh, of well. punching him in the face. Well, mm -hmm. your dream might come true. I mean, <laughs> that's still possible. You can punch sleeping people. D yes, I've I heard that. I don't understand how the sleeping part negates the ability to punch people. Also, um... As we are standing up here looking around, how do we look dressed compared to everyone else that's walking around? How is everyone dressed? Flamboyant. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Non-black sweater. <laughs> 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 well, the thing is, my character is dressed in like uh, a carny kind of outfit. Mm -hmm. um, however, <laughs> has been asleep for about a year in a forest, so <laughs> it is not looking at its best. <laughs> Love oh, this dear. aesthetic, though. Can you draw this when this stream is done, please? I will draw this eventually, because I rather love this character. <laughs> Cottage core disaster. Cottage. Yep. Um, in keeping with the theme of everything that I describe about my character being uh, completely incongruous with the way that I'm acting. Um, uh, Grimdrum is wearing uh, robes of the Cobalt Soul because that's the kind of monk I am. Yep. So, uh, you know, like librarian clothes. Yep. <laughs> but it's like not only round, but in blue robes. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you look like a little, you look like a little Pluto. You look like a blueberry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh, no. Turning violet, like violet, violet, turning violet, violet. violet, violet. <laughs> yes, that's my joke. <laughs> uh, uh, Farkarin is wearing green and gold clothes, like green, uh, just kind of, you know, gnome high-end casual wear that has gold <laughs> stitching in it that has clearly seen better days, uh, as evidenced by her living in the woods. <laughs> for a while now. And uh, she's got some flowers tucked into her buttonholes where she's missing buttons and stuff like that. It's like, okay, one what, what of the best things about the aesthetic for my character, I think, is that since they can't, don't need to breathe uh, in order to like pa pass notice, they can pretend to be a statue effectively <laughs> enough that they oh, can pass. That's You're Tanuki Mario? 
from Mario 3? <laughs> Basically. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. <laughs> so, Stefan looks you all up and down. It says, I think we just need to go as fast as we can. Pass through the streets without too much of a scene. And hopefully we won't get into too much bother. You catch what I mean? You're saying we look like tourists. <laughs> that is the angle to go for. <laughs> I, I can definitely oh. try and avoid notice. <laughs> Do you want us to make stealth checks, or are we just running through as fast as possible? I think it's more just a case of, yeah, just like passing through. Um, I think Farquhar's idea of the tourist is a good idea, right? <laughs> just like, yeah, like, like looking around, like pointing a lot. <laughs> I, was say, I, I, like, I have uh, the far traveler background which my feature is all eyes on you, where I can evidently parlay access to people and places I shouldn't be able to get to. <laughs> For me, myself, my traveling companion. I was Fantastic. gonna say, I mean, like, nice. between that and I have a second identity, a disguise kit and a forgery kit, I feel like we are set here. Nice. <laughs> is, is your second identity a tour guide? <laughs> and I'm obviously a performer in a very convincing costume. <laughs> and I oh, genuinely yeah. look lost. <laughs> yes, you yeah, are. Yeah, you and I could just be there, like, pointing <laughs> and occasionally yeah. stopping and just looking up. <laughs> I've been doing this the whole time. <laughs> yeah, looking up at Trayvon and Hi, hey, oh, and I just need to look up at the buildings as well. Yeah. <laughs> so good, so good. Same height. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and, um, okay, so you, you make your way out there, and uh, I think, um, Stefan. Stefan will take on the uh, the tour guide role, <laughs> and they're pointing out interesting things around you in the upper city here, um, pointing out certain guild houses and uh, you know f you know various uh, locations and famous parks and the like. Um, there's there's actually in the very top of Sharn, there's a big park that has like a frozen lake that you can, like ski on and stuff, and you can <laughs> see the rest of the city below it. It's really awesome. Oh, nice! That's that is very cool. Is Sharon kind of like Ravnica with the way that its guilds are set up, or what is it kind of? Is it like artists and guilds? A little bit. It's the dragon marked houses and yeah. stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, they they have like monopolies on like one of them's in charge of all the um all the airships and and things like yeah. that, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so as you're making your way through, um, Stefan says to you, one problem that we have is uh, finding out where we need to be. You see. <laughs> This Count likes to hide in the shadows. He likes to keep his mansion off the grid. He likes to be private. He likes to be hid. In, a in Count Nido. I was going to say, in like a magical <laughs> sense, or like as in a... <sighs> <laughs> in like a... In like a magical sense, or more just like a buy a house everywhere you go kind of sense? He, due to his nature and aversion to the sun, likes to live in a little pocket plane up oh. here when all's said and done. And he likes to employ staff out in the city, so if we can find one of them, they'll lead us to the Count's. And our goal, our end. Mm. Uh, how well known is this? How well known is this count that we're looking for? He likes to keep things on the down low. He's not one for flashy trinkets or show. Okay, so I'm assuming then if we asked people, they would probably have no idea who he is. People passing through, just going about their day. They wouldn't have anything to add, nothing to say. Okay. There are other ways to find things, though. Actually, I have a thing as a blood hunter uh, called Hunter's Bane, where I have advantage on survival checks to track fey, fiends, and undead. <laughs> hmm, like vampires. <laughs> Weird. 
That sounds handy. handy. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. the dice play along. <laughs> mm-hmm. So actually, I don't know if if I could do that, but if I can, go for it. I would love to. Yeah, yeah. Are they considered undead? I think they are. Yeah. Let's see. Well, oh, yeah. One I thing we don't know I what else they would do. be. One thing I can do is I can activate emboldening bond for up to three willing creatures to give you oh. a, an extra d4 to that roll. Wow. Oh crap. Okay. <laughs> cool. I'll take it. So I can do that to three creatures. So if anyone else wants to like help with this or um, or have any other ideas of how to track down this vampire, I can give you this as well. Nice. Hey, I rolled my survival check. I got an 18. 18. Nice. That's good. That's good. Okay. So, how does this manifest itself in world? Okay. How are you? How are you going about finding? Now, um, mm. according to Stefan, this mm. this vampire has you know lackeys that go out and do things for them and and you know prepare things for them, and they would have the knowledge of where to go and where to where to access this little pocket plane up in this right. upper city here. I think I would probably be looking for any signs of their movements. Like, oh yeah, that's funny. Somebody bought a lot of blood. <laughs> you know, whatever, stuff like that. Yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> Anybody looking, you know, skulking around, being weird. Okay. You, as you're making your way through the city, you find, first place you go when you're looking for a vampire, okay? You find the healer. <laughs> Where the, yeah, where the blood bank is. <laughs> so you find, you look for the healer, the the, uh, the hospital, <laughs> if you will. Um, mm-hmm. And um, you hang out with the others and look for um, anyone, you know, moving with clear, you know, like, um, what do they, what do they call like a bag of colding? I think is, is the pun name for it, right? Is that the, <laughs> yes. The yeah. Refrigerated oh, like bag a of holding. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like a hairy mate. <laughs> basically, basically. And you um, are traveling through the streets here and, and, and you stake out this, stay, stay, if you excuse the pun, you stake out this, um, this healer's place. <laughs> may, may use the stakes later as well, we're not sure. And um, you do indeed, um, after a, a number of, you know, amount of time spent um see a very well dressed um you know kind of long um kind of they look like basically they look like um all all the guys when they go into the matrix (laughs) so it's just like black Mm. oh (laughs) various themes of black (laughs) everyone i had a crush on in eighth grade yes (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah i feel like that by the way very very excited for for blade to come back into the films (laughs) yes same (laughs) so good i would love to try and stealthily tail these very suspicious people i was gonna say i wanted to lean over and ask are we going to tell them or um is it like a thing where we want to try to get the information out of them and then just kind of you know act like it never happened i want to tail them (laughs) yeah yep absolutely okay so you um yeah trayvon with your with your blood hunter background you're able to pinpoint just the people that you 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 know you're after and you say okay that is un- that is definitely a vampire's lackey <laughs> right there <laughs> i know my vampire lackeys when i see them <laughs> indeed the goth recognize goth <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> and um you are going to follow after them so um if you could let me see hang on who who, who do we have here um da, 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 da. Okay, you see this lackey um, come out um, from the healers. Um, they are a- an elf. And you actually see um, Oranala. Um, they also, on their neck, um, they have a um, tattoo. Um, well, what looks to everyone else to be a tattoo, but you recognize it as a, a Mark of Shadows as well. A fellow mm. Mark of Shadows elf. Um, ah. And they are moving through in this overly overly dressed for the weather <laughs> and um, <laughs> and they are moving quickly as if uncomfortable themselves to be out here um, in the streets and I need a stealth check please 
from from, from all of us. A group stealth lot. check. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it depends. Yeah, Are you correct. all sticking? You're sticking together, right? Oh yeah. I was, yeah. Uh, I was. Can I cast Veil of Shadows on myself before that check? Of course. Cool. Um, I was going to uh, go up to this person and try to talk to them to get their attention off, like looking around instead of looking at me. Okay. So if you, yeah, yeah, you want to distract them. So, that the others... I... so like try to talk and walk so that they're paying attention to like me in the conversation rather than everything else going on. Okay. Okay. I mean the one the one downside I can see there is that if they're if they're talking with you, they probably won't go to the pocket dimension. <laughs> um I got a twenty two on stealth. Nice. <laughs> Whoa, wow. Um so I um also while we're sitting here, uh See, I'm gonna like reach into the disguise kit. I'm assuming I have like a large uh, coat that I have in there, and basically mm. throw that on over top of it, and uh, take a second and like give everyone like a second to gather themselves and be like. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Okay. How about um? I don't know. How about how about you stealth first and follow to where they they clearly this entrance is to wherever this this place is that the the count lives, and then you distract them whilst the others sneak in. Yeah, that works for me. Okay, <laughs> that would work too. So, okay. Yes. So um, yeah. Is any, who else is is anyone else stealthing behind the? Uh, yeah, the I, am. I I got a I got eighteen on my roll. Nice. I got a natural 20 because I was correct to make my d20s Yay. compete for my love. Yeah! <laughs> if you've gotten folks, it was Phoenix's fly. D20 Fight Club. <laughs> I rolled with advantage and got a 9. Oh, no. <laughs> um, uh, so I have cutting intuition, which lets me add a d4 to a number rolled on an ability check. However, I didn't really need that because I got an 18 plus 3 plus 2, so I got a 23. Fantastic. <laughs> and so it's stealthy. What's yeah. what's the total with the natural twenty? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Okay, nice. <laughs> Parker okay. just like. So where did everybody go? <laughs> <laughs> Parker just smacks straight into like a lamppost. <laughs> <laughs> We're not role playing as me in the real life. <laughs> self insert. Thinking about Tony getting himself stuck in the toilet in the tub. <laughs> um, okay, so. You, um, Grimdrum, Olenala, Trayvon, and Haheo, you are following stealthily behind, and this figure does not see um, that you're following. But, Farkarin, this lackey pauses and kind of like looks down over their shoulder towards you and picks up their pace. And the others, you manage to stealth and follow after them and keep keep up with them. Farkarin, you have to kind of veer off to avoid suspicion. And giving it a moment, you kind of loop around the block. Um, but you're lost in this... <laughs> your actual tourist vibes actually kick in proper. You kind of get lost and you, you wonder where to go. And you, you find yourself in this small block of parkland with a, a fountain, you know, sparkling in, in the in the, in the the centre of the, of the park there. And... You're kind of looking around and you can't see the others. You don't know where they've gone. They're stealthing so well. But there's a rustle of leaves on the tree that's above you. And on the lowest branch, a squirrel comes jumping out. <laughs> well, hi there, little buddy. Buttercup's followed you here. <laughs> my name's Farker and Deergle. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fox, but it'll do. <laughs> I'm new in town. It's so nice to meet you. Hi. What you doing? Do you like my? Do you, do you like both my pairs of glasses? <laughs> do I do? And I'll hand over a nut. Oh, swell. I lost my. Uh, well, they're not really my friends. I I lost the folks that I just met. We were tailing um some vampires. Mm -hmm. They were wearing uh black capes and they looked mm -hmm. very very cool mm -hmm. in their their leather and their sunglasses mm -hmm. and I, have you seen anybody like that mm. just a moment hey everyone everyone and it like, looks up and there's just like the tree's just full of these city squirrels and <laughs> and it's like this this little one here they've got nuts from a real forest and there's just like, <laughs> <laughs> <it's> like <laughs> all of these city squirrels 
<laughs> like, rat catcher from GC. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, if we'll give you the information if you've got more of these. Oh, I absolutely. Have... <laughs> just keep at... doling them out. <laughs> they're, everyone, everyone's like, oh, they're organic. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, they, they came. There was one of uh, one of those. Look, um, someone sounds like that. They just came through. They were over there. Down, see that street over there? You know, I tend to get lost really easily. Could you guide me? Sure. Why not? Pew. Yeah. Jumps, up, jumps onto your shoulder. That away. <laughs> Let's go. And, and everyone, Far Green does have speak with small beasts, which is yeah. this whole conversation that's happening. It's not <laughs> happening in Carbon, don't worry about it. <laughs> no, it's, it's just this gnome is just chattering away at these squirrels. I'm reminded of what Squirrel Girl kid, convinced all of the Central Park squirrels to like cover her body and make squirrel armor for her. <laughs> <laughs> I love Central what? Park squirrels. They give no shit. They're yep. so amazing. Squirrel yep. Girl has the combined powers of squirrel and girl. Yep. Yeah. I don't think London. that's a power that either of those things have. Excuse me. London squirrels are very similar. The two genders, squirrel and girl. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, with my newfound friends, uh, I will head off. <laughs> after you. No, not after you. I'm on your shoulder. Together. Let's go. Let's go! <laughs> and um, they they lead you and in the direction they saw the others go. And luckily, before too long, you do catch up with your friend skulking on a corner, waiting as you see Olanala moving ahead of the group, going off to engage this fellow shadow, Mark of the Shadow Elf, in uh, in conversation. So, Have we, like, stopped at, like, where the Shadow Dimension, like, the uh, the pocket thing is, or are they still walking? Um, they... Once you've gone into the pocket um, dimension, um, you would be very, you know, um, very conspicuous if you if you went up to um, engage them. So, um, you've... They basically, they, they started to um, interact with a part of the wall, which you, as a, as a fellow Mark of Shadow elf, recognized they were um, doing the required gestures and things to um, open up the portal and um, they actually get it open and then you time it you time it just so that as they do that you kind of like step up towards them hello they turn and they, they look surprised and and they kind of step between the portal and, and you so they can't sit and they're like yes how are you? It's been a while since I've seen you. Um, I'm afraid you have me at an advantage. I I don't believe so. I do think we've worked together this once. Usually we don't time together. It's usually different shifts, different assignment. But normally, you um, were in the employ of my employer. Yes, at least for a little bit, yes. You are no longer? Oh, it's one of those things where it... It was something where I got a little bit sidetracked with something, and then, you know, I've been trying to re-establish contact to start talking again. And they completely forget about the portal, and they step t towards you e eagerly. And they're like, oh my goodness. Please tell me, how does one terminate employ without becoming terminated? <laughs> how did you get out? I've been wanting to sever ties for so long. He's such an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> um, I'm gonna like take a second and be like, and like sit and think, and then uh, like with my hand behind my back, like point my thumb toward it, like gesture my arm behind my back. <laughs> yeah. Um, and essentially like go into uh start speaking be like i'm not exactly quite sure how to uh explain it in common so and then kind of go into a thing in elvish about the technicality of contracts and the legality of that okay and what exactly that means and like take out the whole thing about uh the like the fake forged id i have of like mm. a baroness and be like yeah, so like if you check the contract thing, this, 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 and this. <laughs> and, and you got this like tiefling lawyer 
Yup. <laughs> yup. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'll just I'll do that for a little bit. <laughs> but we'll definitely be sneaking towards the door because that no is brilliant. <laughs> okay, as that Thank conversation's you. happening, yeah, the rest of you kind of like sidling behind, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Scooby Doo tiptoeing behind, and uh, just like um, and the the portal is is open. There's just like a dark kind of shadowy space um, in the corner of the uh, of a couple of buildings there, and um, you start to make your way stealthily towards it, and as that happens, um, Oranala, you are, yeah, you're continuing this conversation, um, and you distract them enough so that your friends can get through, um, um, and, uh, unimpeded, and he says, but what, what should I do now? How, how do I, how do I get myself one of these contracts? How, uh, how, what, what should I do with this delivery? The Count is waiting. Uh, I'm gonna like look at him and be like, you know what? If you, if you want to give it to me, I'll try to take care of it. I think what you need to do is you need to go into town and try to find someone who understands uh, contracts with undead and things of that nature. It is a specialty, and after that, you need to sit, you need to talk with them, and you need to explain what's going on, and ask them what they think for you the best next step is, because there it can is... be different for everyone. There is a there is a place the um, the count uses them for business dealings, but there are other lower clerks in the same practice that would perhaps explain it to me. Yes, if you pay them more because they're lower clerks, they're going to be more willing to not say anything. I've been saving up for if I was able to get out. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And then like pat him on the shoulder and be like, I wish you the best of luck. First things first, take up some of these stupid clothes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is he giving me to deliver to, to the count? It basically, it's that, that little refrigerated box. <laughs> okay, so it's, yeah, from I'm the, just going to the box on my shoulder now. Awesome. <laughs> and he's like, look, you'll never see me again, but I will always remember you and will always be thankful. Yes, and do like a little curtsy and be like, now, I would recommend you hurry off before anyone else sees you standing here or talking about this. <laughs> yes, indeed. And, um, they, they use their, because they have the same marker shadow as you, they use their, um, they use their shape shadows and the, mm -hmm. the shadows from the corner of the alleyway almost seem to detach from the wall and wrap around them and they bow yes thankfully, as they disappear and they cast invisibility in themselves. And then just kind of, like, do, like, a little bow and then, like, just duck into the portal and be like, anyways. <laughs> I'm gonna go on that one. <laughs> Indeed. And, speaking Super of... Super glad they didn't go invisible before we, uh, before we saw them, huh? <laughs> oh, by the way, I made acquaintances. This is Jethro, and this is Muffins, and this is Ragabear, and this is Tolliver, and... <laughs> oh, I'll shake pleasure. each of the pleasure. squirrels' hands. Pleasure, pleasure. I wish you, you just... You <laughs> we'll also shake hands. Oh, yes, I apparently have acquired um, a, a delivery, because apparently this is now part of my job. Oh. Anyways, I believe we should probably continue before anyone wonders why there are a bunch of tourists in a pocket of the <laughs> Yes, please. Indeed. Okay. Um, I'm just going to keep my scroll on. <laughs> <laughs> get get and... your scroll on, baby. <laughs> Looks good. Thank you. Um, okay, so here we are on stream. Um, we have our <laughs> the view that awaits you as you enter into this pocket Ooh. domain here. <laughs> cool. So it is a much darker environment as you step through the portal into this pocket domain, and there is a fake, um, you know, horizon and things, um, and the stretch, um, the, the path in front of this large gothic-looking mansion um, does stretch off in the uh, in the distances there, and you see this spiky. Um, wrought iron fence uh, in front of the um, main building and you see a few lights inside as it is artificially kept at night time here it seems um, 
And what would you like to do? Well, there's a wrought iron fence. Indeed. I'm thinking. I'm thinking that it's going to be very creaky and very loud when it opens. <laughs> However, uh, it appears that he's expecting a delivery, so maybe that's not going to be an issue. Yes, I don't. But I, I still want to do like a selfie over the fence, especially as they're only expecting one person. Oh, exactly. How tall is the fence? Question. How tall? Oh, sorry, how tall? Um, yeah. It's, it's like eight, eight feet high. I was gonna say, oh, what are these twenty feet vertical <laughs> leap? Normal jumping <laughs> height. Let's go. Uh, is it small enough? We could wriggle through. Some of us could wriggle through the bars. <laughs> um, all your new friends do. Yes. <laughs> <It's the middle> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Grimdrum, you propel yourself vertically from beneath Hayao's elbow up <laughs> and over the fence, and you land on the other side, and you see that there is a um, a mechanism on the doorway here and it is something written on the mechanism there are there are little rollers like a combination lock kind of thing but they're tiny little figures can I use my eyes of minute seeing to perhaps perceive them better? Minute seeing? I do. I take I out my little them. quail glasses. <laughs> I need to hear minute like as a tiny. I heard in minute as in a lizard that I own. <laughs> I take out a small lizard and I would like to perceive the combination. Let me see, for boy. Me. Just hold the lizard up to it. <laughs> My son. Yeah. What do you see with your newt eyes? <laughs> it's, it's like while Grim Grub is doing that, um, I could probably make it over with Forkorn if uh, they would like me to just, you know, jump the fence. Forkorn, would you, you like you to jump the fence? <laughs> uh, uh, I'd like you to try jump. jump the fence carrying me. I'm fairly sure. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh I would I can help you by giving you some bull strength if you would like before you do that nice. with some <laughs> enhanced ability or cat's grace, whichever you would prefer. Oh, cat's grace sounds lovely. <laughs> okay. A thing I should have cast on myself before I did that. Uh, <laughs> stealth check. <laughs> You have advantage on dex checks. Excellent. Okay, so, hell with advantage, would you give me an acrobatics check, please? Okay, that's a 16. Nice. Okay, yes. You managed to um, leap up and over with Farkarin um, tucked under your arm or on your shoulders, as you see fit, and um, avoid the rather nasty crenellated top, <laughs> spiky top of this uh, of this fence, and softly land on the other side. Um, Grimdron, <laughs> your your various uh, lenses are slotting into place, like tick, 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 and you see that um, there is a um, there is a combination lock there, and you spin the dials, and there's only one. Um, there's only one combination that makes sense, that makes a sentence of the various little words that are written on these on these uh, various rollers here, and it just says um, count, and the next one says rolls into place, Fabio, and the next one clicks around, rules. <laughs> uh, is it with a Z? Really? Though? Is it with yeah. a Z? Damn right. Damn right. Better be. <laughs> I with my like eight layers of spy kids glasses uh <laughs> just look up eyes incredibly magnified um and like, i cracked the code <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not there ah. <laughs> sorry hang on one, of the, one of the squirrels ah. <laughs> okay and um so the door swings open for and trayvon the last one left outside thank you very much. i was gonna say i was gonna say trayvon used his his prodigious five strength to try and climb over the fence. It was just like dangling from it. <laughs> I don't think I can get over. Oh, 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 you use your wings, right? <laughs> no, with an ominous, <laughs> an ominous creep. I don't think I can lift myself. <laughs> the wrought iron gate opens 
and you see Grimdrum with huge fishbowl eyes, <laughs> like peer out. <laughs> Thank okay. you so much for the round friend. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you get your eyes a little bit farther away from me? Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand the question. I say approaching. <laughs> okay, so you make your way mm. through the grounds. Um, there's lots of, you know, faux um, crypts and, you know, like various <laughs> slanty angled tombstones and, um, you know, just straggly, um, dark grass just like clinging on to the lack of sunshine here and you make your way across um, to the gothic manse that is uh, towering above you um, and how would you like to gain entry? Start looking for a second combination lock. Uh, I would like to look for um, an open window. Sure. Okay. Should I just walk up the door and knock on it? Because delivery! <laughs> that is an option. How tall is the building? Um, it's a good... It got, <laughs> refers back to a picture with several stories. So it's got it's got yeah. a good, like, five... The, the main tower, like, the central tower, is, like, five stories. Um, but then okay. the, the wings, you know, the, the east wing, west wing kind of sides of it are um, a couple of stories. Okay. Cheers, Crackety. Yeah, but I'm definitely looking for um, an open window that I can climb into, mm -hmm. or a window that I can probably open. Okay. You um, notice that there is a window up on the tower that is open. However, it looks difficult to get to. There are, like, these strange kind of tangled, like, dead-looking vines that climb up the side of the house, but they don't go over to that window. They do climb up, they, go, they climb up the side of the building to a similar, similar side of things, but they don't actually head in that direction. Thank you. I have... Decent acrobatics. You still have advantage for the hour. <laughs> oh, nice. I do. Nice, nice. Um, there's also there's also a very large-eyed quail who might <laughs> might be able to convince those vines to be more useful. Oh, I I put the I put the eyes away. I was making my friend oh. Trayvon uncomfortable. <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Clarice. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, um, well, if only these vines went over a little bit to the right there, <laughs> that would make the climb easier. I might be able to do it. Do you need a good jumper? <laughs> I, I think it's a little bit higher than, than uh, 20 feet. Uh, although, if you could give me a boost with that jump, I might be able to jump the distance. What, what would <laughs> boosting entail? <laughs> For a tiny like... little quail? <laughs> I'm not sure. Like, <laughs> put your wings together. Um... Can anybody talk to plants? <laughs> or I... maybe I could boost you since you're the lighter of the two of us. I but could... I'm, not, I'm not sure how well your roundness would get through that window. Toss me. Are you saying I that? Are you saying can't that talk to plants? To I can talk to plants. Me, I'm the plant talker. And another <laughs> another <laughs> surprise new detail about Grimdrum. Um, I just walk up to the <laughs> tower and say, "Oh, hi, excuse me. Um, could you mind nudging over just a little bit to the plants using my seed speech, which and... lets me talk to plants." <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um, seed. So it says through speech and touch, you can communicate simple ideas to living plants. Uh, I don't know if they have the ability to move themselves, but I can ask them to. We just take down Count Fabio with the power of vines and squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, you, nature. <laughs> you communicate with these vines, and they 
rustle and move in a way that, you know, thanks to your seed speech, you are able to interpret your, your, your hermitage out in the wilds, give you, you know, this unique understanding of, of the plants and their movements. And um, they communicate to you that they are, um, they are willing to aid you. Um, and, you know, um, if, if you are against the Count, because they, they have been starved of sunlight for a very long time, and they're, they're fairly anti-Count as well. Well, we are definitely against the Count. <laughs> um, so if you do it, um, if you do it in their name, and you know, would be working against the Count in their name, um, if one might say, if you if you would be willing to um, do it for the Vine, then you could. <laughs> oh my God! In the I, year of our I'm sorry, twenty twenty two. I'm sorry, I can't hear you anymore. I have to leave. <laughs> Does the twenty foot vertical leap up and out of the stream? <laughs> <laughs> Apologies. Apologies. <laughs> sorry, what was that? I'm getting a, a phone call. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, the reception is really bad. <laughs> um, Apologies. Yes, you yeah. convince them to, to twine and shift across the face of the building and end up more towards that open window instead. I turn back and I give Haeheo a thumbs up but it doesn't really look like much because I got wings. So it's just kind of like a... <laughs> Are you surrendering or... <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I nod in your Did direction it. and... and just... <laughs> that is a very handy skill to have. And I will uh, attempt to make the climb up to that open window. <laughs> hey, Rovaljax, I'm, I'm a dad. I'm contractually obliged to be out of date. <laughs> 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 okay, excellent. So yes, you, um, you're all following after High Hail, clambering up here. I, I am. Yeah, I actually, with my talons, have yes. advantage on climbing. So excellent, excellent. I'm ready. <laughs> before we go, actually, before we go up, uh, Trayvon is going to scarf down his his special potion that he's got. Yes. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> good plan. Good plan. Go move, go move. <laughs> okay. okay, so that is a non-natural 20. Nice, excellent. Okay. Um, yes, Farkarin and uh, Olanana as well, if you'd like to give me a um, acrobatics or athletics. Oh no, hi I wasn't <laughs> hanging on to me anymore. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to enhance my own ability. Nice. <gasps> uh, and for strength, because I'm slightly better at that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. 19. Nice. For athletics. There we go. <laughs> uh, 15 on my 15? athletics. Okay. Yep. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do, because I'm debating if I just, like, leave the... If I try to go into the front door and be like, I have a delivery, or if I just try to book it through the window and be like, anyway, here comes the launch I mean, box. you have the delivery and the discarded coat. You could feasibly just go in. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, I think we're going to do that then. Because no, I would... am not athletic. Everything that... is in the brain. That would pull house stuff away from the rest of the house as well. So that's good. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Okay, yeah, you guys could do that. And I'm going to be like, yeah, on the footsteps. But you probably can't see it because like you're all the way up there. And I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> Try and stick step. with the group and climb. Also, I got a thirteen. Okay. Uh, for athletics. With the twenty foot vertical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just Take it off jump that. and then climb down to the vines and then jump. And climb yeah. to the vines. <laughs> Assassin's Creed style. <laughs> oh my totally. gosh. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you are all clambering up the outside. We got this kind of like panned out shot where you know we see the the four of you clambering up the side of the tower and then Olanala waking their way towards the front door with their long strange leather trench coat <laughs> billowing behind them and yep. um as you uh, you wrap on the door it creaks open and there are similarly dressed um elves inside oh good evening i have uh bought the delivery for the master where is the regular guy? He is currently in the bathroom. In the bathroom? Yes. 
Noted. Um, well, <laughs> I didn't want to ask questions. <laughs> I don't I behave for that. <laughs> I am the regular guy. <laughs> <laughs> I am the regular guy. It's like you are a completely different look, completely different gender. <laughs> not playing Age of the Empire. <laughs> I am the regular guy. <laughs> okay. Um. Yes. This is most irregular, but. Um. Can you make me a persuasion check, please? Uh. Yes. Let me. Okay. Now, can I convince you that I'm doing it as a deception thing? Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, come on. 22. 22. Fantastic. I got a 17 plus 5. Excellent. Excellent. Um, <laughs> very well. Please wait within whilst we Communicate to the Count it has arrived and check if there is anything to be returned to the <sighs> outside. Yes. Uh, <laughs> gonna walk in and while I walk in, quickly, I feel like the, the door also sounds quite unpleasant. Is that normally how the door is? Of course. Yeah, the creaking open was quite unusual. It is how the Count likes it. I guess it's an ambiance thing, is it? <laughs> Meanwhile, climbing up the outside, flanked by several squirrels, <laughs> you clamber up the blinds towards the open window and over the sill into a deep wine red carpeted hallway, which makes it very easy to sneak as you find yourself in this almost muted space. The heavy carpets, the long drapes on the windows, ancient looking portraits in gilded flame, uh, flames, frames, excuse me. <laughs> gilded frames. Flames, excellent. <laughs> hanging on the wall. The place is on fire. No, um, and you, um, you look and you see a long, um, line of um, ancestors of whom assumably the Count um, and they, they all have fabulous hair in various it's all it's all dark you know like various dark browns and blacks but uh, <laughs> um, and um, you see that this long corridor um, leads there's like a stairway le leading down into the tower um, below you um, in front of you and then the corridor goes to either side and then wraps around the sides of the tower to the left and right. Okay. Where would you like to go? Good question. Does we ever get an idea about where this item might be held? I forgot what we're here for. <laughs> we're here for an I item that could create portals. Indeed, hey, you're here to I steal the well use, of many worlds. May I use my gambler's never tell me the odds feature? Mm -hmm. uh, that, okay, this probably doesn't count as a downtime activity. But of figuring out the odds of a best plan, I could get a sense of which choice is likely the best one. Fantastic. You know, downtime, yeah. sneak and do your thing on your off time, on your off hours. Right, I'm just hanging out. <laughs> so <laughs> just do, hanging take, out in a vampire's lair. Five minute break. Take a five minute break. Yeah, just a guy's weekend. <laughs> okay. Um, is there a role for that, or are you just you? No, know? that's okay. just at the DM's discretion. Fantastic. I know what the best way is. <laughs> okay. <sighs> You are pretty sure that um, a, an item that you know this powerful would have like pride of place, and knowing your your knowledge of these showy undead uh, vampire lords, and um, they probably have a elaborate space at the top of the tower where you find yourselves here. As you see, the stairs are already going down, so you think yeah, staying staying on this floor is the best way. So, so what are these rooms? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's probably up here. Can I try and listen at each of the doors to see if there's an empty one that I can peek into and see what's in there? Um, there, 
there are no doors on the corridor here, it just goes and curls around to either side. So, left or right. There. Um... We okay. could split up. <laughs> the safest plan. We were already doing split the up. This entire time, huh? <laughs> it's like I do not recommend splitting up more. Um, <laughs> I'm going to choose to the left. Okay. So, you start making your way down the corridor, and you find yourselves. able to hear some kind of chanting in the distance. So that was one of the squirrels <laughs> squeaking. <laughs> and I don't exactly like the chanting. <laughs> squeak, squeak, squeak them. You yeah. <laughs> pad down the corridor don't worry about that person, they're fine. Um, and <laughs> you don't need to make a stealth check here because of the, the, the richness of the carpet. You know, that is not what chanting sounds like. <laughs> well, There's not chanting. with that attitude, no. <laughs> no. There's chanting too, it's just chanting and screaming. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you like that sometimes. Can I try and figure out what the chanting is saying? Mm, make me a perception check. Ooh, interesting. That'll be a 25. Okay. Listening, you get the idea that this is a preparatory kind of ritual for a, a sacrifice to feed their vampire lord and give them the energy and the sustenance they need to make a journey. As it seems they are preparing to leave and deliver this item to their friends in the depths. Oh, they're, they're, like, saying this item like they have it in the room with them? Um, it's more, it's talking about the, um, sacrificing someone to give their lord power and the, um, the, the sustenance to make a long journey. Um, but it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty, it's a safe bet, you know, ritual chamber, probably where they're keeping the magical yeah. item as well. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, like, first off, they're sacrificing someone, which I don't like, and if we can stop it, we should, probably should. And but... Fakr, Fakr, again, you, you get the you know the idea that the, the best odds of finding this thing are going to be in the same place. Meanwhile, Olanala... We don't get paid extra for rescuing people, do we? <laughs> who knows? Who knows? You might. <laughs> might pay you for this. Thanks. <laughs> um, Olanala, what, um, what are you doing down below? I, uh, they said that they were going to go get it, so I'm just kind of sitting, like, looking around inconspicuously. Mm -hmm. I can't do it, but I'm definitely whistling. <laughs> like, I'm just like, yeah, this is casual. Um, I have the ability to uh, sense good and evil, and then also anything affected by the hollow spell, or know the location of any celestial fiend or undead within 60 feet of me that is not behind total cover. I would Fantastic. like to know if I can get like an approximation of any of those things that might be around me. Okay. Um, a couple of the house staff who are here in the space with you are definitely undead. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, anyone on the upper floors would be behind total cover. Okay. Um, so that one that first greeted you at the doorway um, comes back and says, It has been suggested that you deliver it to yourself. Oh. Right this way, if you please. That's quite wonderful. I am very honored and then follow after. Okay. And they go up this um, sweeping staircase that goes up and then branches off left and right and curls up the tower. Yeah. Uh, keeping my eyes out for my friends, like, doing, like, the, you know, the, like, looking at the decorations. Looking at the decorations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, yep. I think even just with your, um, has your passive perception, yeah, your passive perception is oh. 16. Like, even, even with um, just your passive perception, definitely a few of these paintings are secret doors. <laughs> Oh, Definitely. yeah, that, I would, Definitely. yeah. That doesn't even surprise me. I feel like all rich people have shit like that. <laughs> right, right. Okay. And you, um, yeah, are clambering up 
um, to the um, upper floors um, with this cultist, uh, excuse me, <coughs> member of staff leading you <laughs> um, as they go. And the rest of you are creeping along the corridor and... Um, I so have three this. others with me right now. I think right before we go in, I'm going to activate the um, emboldening bond. Okay. So that on each turn you can add a d4 to a roll. Excellent. Um, I wanted to ask, is the guy that is leading you down, are they undead? Yes. Okay, that's not what I think you're 100%. Like, mm, interesting. <laughs> okay. So, as the three of, no, four of you are um, creeping along the corridor there, um, the sounds of the chanting um, is still ahead, and you arrive at the edge of the corridor and it opens into a larger space, and you see a large chamber with a big, single big circular window um, looking out over this dark pocket dimension and there is a large altar in front of that and you can see at the corners of the altar are four dark crystals that are pulsing with a inner light and there is a sacrificial victim attached to the top of the altar and various cowled um, priests, cultists, folks um, surrounding the um, main altar and then as you peek around the corner towards the back of the room surrounded by multi um, multi-fingered uh, candelabra um, with dark tallow candles but that's how that's like I was so worried. I was like, what has so many <laughs> <laughs> And um, there is a coffin with a gilt, um, a gilt embossed um, thing on the top there. Wake up, sleepy head, knocks it over. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like I might get a chance to punch him after all. Um, <laughs> and yay. first and foremost, um, on a lectern, or plinth um, next to the uh, altar, in between the altar and the window, um, there is a folded dark cloth which matches the description of the Well of Many Worlds. All right, we found it. Everyone go home. <laughs> All right, well. Okay. I'm fairly certain that I can get to the victim and protect them mm -hmm. if somebody else wants to go after the item. I think I might have a spell for this. I'm gonna try and cast Unseen Servant. Okay. So By the way, Haraheo, you notice something very odd. This Count Fabio seems to be someone who's very focused on the ambiance and the proper mood. You see, it's one of the cultists that's making these screaming noises. That's a little gauche, don't you think? Right. <laughs> and it's, it's strange. You cannot you cannot quite make out what's what the bundle is on the altar there. There's something. It's under under a dark silk cloth. Up on top of the altar there. But clearly, clearly um, chained chained to the altar, ready to be sacrificed. Quick question, did Haheo say that uh, she was going to go for the vampire or the cultist? Uh, I was going to go uh, towards the victim and protect the victim. Okay. okay. And Trayvon, what's the Unseen 7 do? Going for um, the cloth? Yeah, yeah, basically. So it can spring in, uh, hold on. It can perform oh, simple you. tasks that a human servant Thanks, could, including interacting with an object. Okay. Yeah. Um. Our friend Olanala here has inspiration. Thank you, Daisy. I appreciate it. Hopefully, so they can arrive here in one piece. <laughs> I'm gonna say that's that's the hope. That's the hope. <laughs> okay, so um, I yes, can help yeah. uh, Haoheo uh, with that. What was locked down? The cult. The victim is locked down, right? Chain, chain down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can help that with my mage hand. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
And I I always think he's invisible, but it's not because I'm not an arcane trickster. So it's just going to be a hand floating around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just go up behind I one cast... of the cultists, just like 20 years behind him. <laughs> just keeps going. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. Uh, I'm going to cast Protection from Evil and Good on Ha-Hea, um, ha uh, okay. just mm-hmm. to, you know, because you're going to, you're going to be in things, so. Oh, <laughs> that's it. Um, here Trayvon, you go, you got inspiration. Trayvon, you have inspiration too. Ooh, nice. <laughs> now, over here, over here, that means you can, you can re-roll a, a roll once you've seen it, but before I've said if that's a success or a, a fail. Got it. If it looks dodgy, <laughs> you're like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Um, so, the unseen servant is edging around the room. Now, Ha are you are you just trying to stealth up on the cultists as they're distracted by the ritual? Uh, I am not going to stealth. Actually, oh, I'm okay. going to go the other direction and feed the distraction. Because if I go to save the person in the middle of the room, then I'm going to need something a bit different. Uh, so I'm going to oh, bring out <laughs> Zephyr Strike. Ooh! Nice. Ooh, nice. Okay. And this is just one of the best spells. Um, basically, I move like the wind until the spell ends. I don't provoke up to opportunity attacks. Um, once before the spell ends, I can give myself advantage on a weapon attack roll, and it does an extra 1d8 force damage. Uh, whether you hit or miss, your walking speed increases by 30 feet until the end of your next turn. So cool. I am super fast. Excellent. Um, Gotta go fast. So that means I have an 80 foot speed right now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I'm going to rush in and do some damage. <laughs> I'm actually going to focus on freeing the um the sacrificed the person okay the victim um, okay so trayvon are you focusing on your unseen servant or can they just do their own thing they can do their own thing so basically once on my turn i can use a bonus action to like mentally command them to move okay. and do stuff okay so um once um hail kicks things off here what are you doing oh i'm definitely telling him to you know go over there okay and, so, yeah, like, what, what's Trayvon doing whilst, whilst the unseen servant's doing oh that? me my actual self oh <laughs> that's good that's a good question uh <laughs> and Parker hmm. and you too Ooh. I'm probably sticking to the shadows okay and probably trying to inch like around closer to that big window I would say that's okay okay Graham John how about you um so we're we're still hiding, right? We haven't actually kicked off like a fight yet. Um, hi, 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 is about to, but yes. <laughs> okay. Um, then I'm gonna take out the hand crossbow I got and kind of look at it and say, "Oh wait, I can't use this." And I'm gonna put it away. And I'm gonna take out the crossbow that Trayvon got me. <laughs> and what kind of crossbow did you hand me? A light crossbow. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, <laughs> I'm a monk. I only have proficiency in simple weapons. Thank you. Um, so. <laughs> I'm going to take out my crossbow and I'm going to aim it at just uh, whichever cultist looks healthiest and be <laughs> ready to shoot once they notice Ha-Heo. Notice. <laughs> <Notes it. laughs> Farkrim, what you doing? Bitch is going to be very soon. <laughs> uh, Farkrim is ready with that mage hand to help with any unlocking, which honestly she doesn't really know how to do. <laughs> so uh, mentally she is preparing to fight because she is concerned that this could go wrong. Okay. <laughs> right. So this all um, kicks off and um, Har Ahel, you make that first move and go just char- you start charge and just like do battle cry and charge up. Yep. I charge up and I kind of like do the whole covering maneuver on the victim and try and break the bonds. Okay. And um, Grimjob, can you roll me a um, um, ranged weapon attack there with your crossbow? Okay, now. I sure can. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, I was just go. like, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. It is really um, distracting to keep thinking someone's trying to talk to me. Yeah, I, the, the chanting is kind of throwing me off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I turned it down though, so I'm good now. All right, so okay. I couldn't actually figure out how to add it to my character sheet. So it is a simple arranged weapon. So I am proficient. So I that's my dex right. Dex and proficiency, um, yeah. Yeah, so that is going to be a total of 11. 11. Okay, thank you. And uh, Fakarin, um, you are moving up alongside Harheo. Okay, so the two of you go moving forwards quickly. A crossbow bolt whistles past you, thuds into the side of one of these cultists, that, oh, and they just like spin as they're kind of hit by this uh, well-aimed expert crossbow bolt. <laughs> he just just turned out and just like, got a melon with a crossbow. <laughs> and um, oh my god, he's got a gun! <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, so do you. You have a crossbow in your back. <laughs> you're a no, you're no. a bird with a gun. <laughs> Trayvon, um, you want to make my stealth check? See if you're uh, hidden in the shadows there. Uh, let's see. What's my bonus? I believe I got. Oh, geez, I have a plus seven. Uh, yeah, it's a Ooh. twenty-one. <laughs> nice. Wow. Okay. Um, I will send Baron Dragonborn's inspiration to Ha Aheo. There you go. <laughs> oh, and for Parker in too. <laughs> nice. Thank you, Baron. Thank you. Okay, and um, as that um, goes, um, yeah, you, you kind of stealthing into the shadows there, no problem. Um, you have not noticed you yet, and your unseen servant is sneaking around there. And um, let's see here. Okay, um, Ha'ahel, how does your attack go? What, what are you attacking with? Uh, I am attacking <laughs> with my fists because I am better at that, but... What I'm actually trying to do is breaking the bonds. So I'm not sure if you would consider that an attack or not. Um, you can make a, a strike against the chains. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Or go to just grab them and pull them. Um, as you do, you disturb the sheet, the silken sheet, and it kind of shifts a little, and the bottom of it kind of shifts, and sticking at the bottom of the um, the sheet off the edge of the altar are two webbed orange feet. What? A duck? Is that, I was gonna say, is that a duck? <laughs> Excuse me? Grim drum. Can I be I'm helping Hao Heo because my mage hand is out to help with that chain? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So you give uh, give advantage to Hao Heo. Okay. Now, Olanala, as, as you, as they're rolling that, you um, are coming up the stairs and you hear this commotion up above and your your guide is like, no, no, the, the ritual must not be interrupted. And starts running. <laughs> Do you, you gonna follow? Oh, yeah, of course I am. I was wondering where these knuckleheads ran off to, and now I have found them. Thank you. And uh, that's an 18 for the first hit. Oh, okay, excellent. Okay, um, so as you um, strike out um, against these chains um, with that monk training of yours, you do hit them in just the right spots and catch them on the corner of the altar, and they shatter and spring open, and the victim... Um, released from their chains, they're like, ah, 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 thank goodness, <laughs> and they come up, and it is a humble folk like Grimdrum and Trayvon, but they are a goose folk. <laughs> as they reach up and honking, honking in alarm as they come up, and from behind you there is another ominous creaking as the front of the coffin swings open, and... Oh. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use my bonus action to punch the nearest. Uh... Oh yes, please do. <laughs> okay, roll out for, for me. Duck. <laughs> Count Fabio is seen there as they come forward in the, the full-on like you know the the uh, the black suits with the uh, the white shirt underneath and the, the popped <laughs> large collar and <laughs> and they, as they come out you know the fabulous hair um, of course and they're like, who is it who would deny my Ritual sacrifice. No like goose folk. No goose folk shall survive. Not and, ever uh, since that day in the sky coach when I was struck in the face. I must drink the blood of the goose folk. <laughs> That's a, a fifteen to just um, in front of Fab Fabio 
punched one of his servants in the face. Okay, so yeah, you smash the chains open <laughs> and then with your, with your other fist slam into one of the um, hoods of the cultists. They just crumple and go limp as another servant comes running in. But on their heels is Olanala. Olanala, what do you do? Um, so behind them, I'm just kind of like looking at them and I'm like, what happened in the... You know what? Never mind. Um, <laughs> do you want me to... Do you want me to, uh, are we doing like official attack and roll and stuff? Um, if you, if you just say which, which of your abilities you'd like to use, then we, yeah, we can just roll for that, yeah. Okay, I didn't know if we had an issue or anything. Um, so as, uh, just to begin, I'm going to start with, uh, the form of dread. Uh, so you're gonna kind of just see, uh, Olenala, like, she gets... She looks very tired and gaunt. All of a sudden, there is like black around her eyes that makes her kind of look like a skeleton. And you see just uh, essentially like a ghostly witch crown form on her head. And she's like, This is already extremely tiring. <laughs> <laughs> and where is the other thing? There it is. Um, and then, as my action, I am going to essentially. Uh, first off, I'm gonna whip the the ridiculous lunchbox off my shoulder because why am I still carrying the freaking cooler with me? <laughs> um, and then I am going to essentially um, sit there and what looks like I'm going going to reach down as if there's a sheath on my waist and pull out a pack of the blade. I'm going to pull out a magical spectral um, greatsword. Fantastic. And that is my entire turn because I have <laughs> that's my action. Okay, as you cast the um, cast the the, the lunchbox aside, um, Count Fabio is like, no, not the appetizers, and <laughs> and um, dashes towards them. Um, okay, Grimdrop, what you do? I am going to run up to meet him, uh, and I'm just gonna. You hear my tiny little quail feet? Just <laughs> um, and I'm just gonna run straight up and just like roundhouse kick him in the knee um, <laughs> with my action uh Fantastic. and then my bonus action i just like i don't even have to cock it but i do for pure flavor i cock the crossbow and just like <laughs> um, just upper thigh because i'm small and i assume he big excellent yes make those rolls oh, <laughs> he's a normal um, sized human which to you is probably big <laughs> yep. yeah so that's a, a 23 to kick him wow nice uh, okay and then a 19 to shoot him oh wow okay so yes you um managed to um go pitter-pattering across the floor and leap um, as you're so apt to do and kick them right into the knee and it kind of buckles their knee and they fall down onto one knee and as they do you just bring up the um, the arrow and shoot them into the chest as well and he's like ah! oh it is not a stick okay <laughs> he... oh no I thought Trayvon loaded this with stakes <laughs> um, he only gets a five as he lashes out to you with his unnaturally clawed fingers um, but uh, you managed to duck out of the way and avoid that. Farquharing, what's your name? I was going to say, how close is... Uh, is he getting attacks of... Are we getting attacks of opportunity on him as he runs by us? Um, the the count will... Grandjohn ran to the count, so... He hasn't... <coughs> excuse okay. me. Okay, because I thought he was running after the lunchbox. Hasn't moved okay. yet. Mm -hmm. okay. Hearing him say that it's not a steak, okay. Fargrim... <laughs> changes her mind from <laughs> cloud of daggers and instead would like to rage okay. and Yay. pulls out her great club <laughs> and uh is going to try and break it I was gonna say, in I was gonna him say, i was gonna say try to oh, take, oh. It, take your knife out and aggressively whittle your shell lay down <laughs> <laughs> I do have a dagger, so I could try and make my great club into a stake <laughs> instead for an action. But I, w I would like to kind of uh, aggressively uh, poke him with a club. Okay, make me make me an athletics check with advantage because you're raging um, to slam okay. your club into the altar and break it in a useful way. <laughs> okay, and I have that plus four, right, from Zan. Yes. Earlier was that yes. a thing? Yep. Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. And that's per turn. Oh shit. Uh, so that's a fourteen. Okay. Oh wait, no, it's more because I'm raging. Nice. Ah, uh, so that's a 14, 
Uh, uh, oh, wait, I already had advantage. No, just kidding. Okay, it's 15. 15, okay. <laughs> so yeah, you slam your club against the edge of the altar, and and the, the Fabio misconstruing you is like, you shall never, never damage the ancient altar of my family. It has been <laughs> through the generations, and believe me, vampiric <laughs> generations are very long. <laughs> and, um, but he doesn't know what you're doing, and it doesn't break the altar, but it does break your club. And he's like, ha, 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 your weapon is damaged. How will you defeat me now? <laughs> and you bring it up, and it's just like, ting. <laughs> oh, like, I think I'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ola and Ala, what do you do? Okay, I just have to check what I actually have to do to attack this thing. Um, because I want to make sure it's not something where I have to do something that's weird for it. Um, so, okay, just a pack of things, it's just magical. Okay, so I don't think it actually changed anything. Okay, so, uh, the closest person, uh, toward me, what, like, whatever cultist is the closest to me, I am going to um, take my action to essentially uh, hit them with my greatsword. Awesome. Go for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... And tr Trayvon, how are you? What's your next? Um, let's see, I'm putting and it's straight button, so... Oh my gosh, I haven't had to do this in a while. That's a 20. Excellent. Okay, so yes, you swing your great sword and it cuts into one of the cultists and they double over over the blade and, and crumple down into their robes there. Um, Trayvon, there is a the tug on your sleeve, hidden though you are, as your unseen servant comes up to you and has the, the well of many worlds. <laughs> oh, is that... Uh, I was going to ask you, is that... Um, is that cultist still alive? The one, they, they seem very badly injured, so they're just like rolling on the floor, like clutching at where the wound was. Okay, because uh, you have to do a wisdom saving throw, <laughs> and if he fails, then he's frightened of me, and then has to get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Um, so yeah, the form of dread, um, which is, you know, your undead patron just like manifests themselves through you. Um, and they just like clutching onto the wound, they're just kind of like pulling themselves across the floor, like, oh, oh. It's like, no, no. Okay. Uh, uh, hey -oh. Um and Trayvon, what are you doing? Um, your Unseen Servant brings you the thing, and Count Fabio notices, he's like, The artifacts! They have the artifacts! Everyone! Everyone! And there's a sonorous bell goes off in the background somewhere as the alarm uh, is raised. I'm going to go and punch Fabio in the face. <laughs> Do it! I think that is a Do fantastic it. idea. Do um, it. <laughs> because I didn't actually use the... Uh, extra damage strike yet Go so Zephyr is still going on and just rushes up to him and just says you really should pay for your carnival rides and food <laughs> <laughs> he looks confused and notices the costume <laughs> he's like he's like you. It can come back to haunt you. <laughs> and we'll, we'll punch him in the face. Excellent. Okay, give me that roll. <laughs> Whilst that's being rolled, Trayvon, your unseen servant looks around and you hear the sound of many cultists coming running from the um, house below. And your unseen servant just goes running and like smashes through the circular window and just like out. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold Whoa. on. Is it going to disappear then? Because it's 60 feet away from you. Die am I? Hey, you know? It falls for one. It's like I'm gonna hit the. Oh no, I'm good. And it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like, goodbye. It, it's like oh, what I want to do is I want to do the first strike, then the second strike, and flurry of flows if I can. My word. <laughs> oh my gosh, go for it. So first attack was a 19 to hit. Nice. Nice. Second is a 16 to hit. Okay. And flurry of flows. I'm trying to remember. Da, 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 flurry blows. You can spend a key point to do another unarm strike as part of your bonus action unarm strike thing. So it's like attack, key point, two unarm, unarm strikes as a yep. bonus action. Back. Oh. Okay. Back. So. So wait, one key point to do two unarm strikes? Yeah, instead of the usual one. Mm -hmm. 
Because you get one as a bonus action for free every round, because you're a monk. Yeah, for that was, yeah. All right. So, well, uh, third attack is... uh, Probably at nine. I don't think that one hits. Uh, That one misses, unfortunately, yeah, but the other ones are okay. (laughs) And you have your crystal. You going to re-roll that one? Oh, you know what? I will re-roll that one. There you go. I think that would be great. Yeah, that'll be a 17. Excellent, yeah, okay. So 16 was a meter beats it, so you're good. Um, okay, so this this uh, reborn furball just goes moving across the space faster faster than you would imagine as the Zephyr Strike kicks in and there is a flurry of blows boom, 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 and attacking um, the <laughs> Count Fabio and he's like, just like falling back into this rain of blows. Um, the um, Stefan like shouts out to you. He's like, he's like, he points to the window. He's like, Trayvon! Take it! Take the artifact and fly! <laughs> Hold on, I have to do something real quick. I'm gonna run across the room, and I have the potion of bouncing I just mm-hmm. drank. I'm gonna run all the way back and throw myself into the wall. Yes. I'm gonna try and bounce into Farkarin and launch them with their giant stake into Count Fabio, basically. <laughs> you that is my plan. Are you just Goldberg this? Yo, yes! I love this plan! I love this! <laughs> yes. I'm pinballing it. It's pinballing yeah. and gambling. It's perfect for those two. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Okay, give me um, give me the uh, acrobatics check to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I love how your first thought was like, AO. Worldwide's up the wall. Definitely using my inspiration for hey. that. Because <laughs> <laughs> that is not a good roll. Timely inspiration. That is better. Okay. Uh, let's see. Acrobatics. <laughs> so that would be... I'm going to add that d4 as well. This goes. Okay. So all together... Let's see. 15 in all. Okay, fantastic. So, yes, you um, go running across the room. The uh, potion flowing through your system means you just you ricochet off the wall, just go flying towards the count, grab Farkarin in the, in the, in the mid-flight, um, and you scoop them up. Farkarin, um, just roll me, um, roll me a sleight of hands to get this stake on the exact, you know, <laughs> on the right place. <laughs> oh, boy, okay, here we go. <laughs> you also have a crystal. <laughs> I'm going to use my advantage. <laughs> Thank you, chat. <laughs> <laughs> That's a 10. A 10. <laughs> okay. So you um, go flying across the room under Trayvon's arm, and you bring the broken club up, and it slams into Count Fabio as Haraheo steps out of the way, moving faster than they have a right to. But you slam into them, and the Count doubles over around the stake, (laughs) and rises up as it misses their heart. (laughs) <laughs> and a bunch of cultists pour into the room and um, I think um, Stefan Stefan's like everyone come on we must go and um, you go running running towards the window and as you do you see descending down next to the window an air coach with two air elementals <laughs> and you see you see the little dwarf woman Hilda Hilda's just like, Hola, come on, let's go! (laughs) Some squirrels came and told me you were in a bit of bother. (laughs) Yes! As as we run out the door, Farkarin would like to take back her her failure and turn off her rage and just control flames using those candles (laughs) to light the room on fire. Okay, yes, okay, yes. all of you just kind of run across the across the room towards the uh, the waiting uh, air air coach there, and the candles do flare up and the flame is directed off towards oh. the extravagant furnishings and there is <laughs> with a whoosh. Yeah. Hang on, Sirenscape, you've got our back here. I know. Come on. Okay, with a whoosh of fire, the 
whole of the space starts to burn and flame and you just see Fabio silhouetted against the flames it's like no no not the oh. well of many worlds get them stop them but the various cultists are either doubled over in pain clawing across the floor in fear away from you clutching at the crossbow bolts in their neck <laughs> it's like, ah, ah, and you run across the room and one by one leap Grimdorm, uh, you just from within like 20 feet within the room you leap out the window <laughs> and all of you jump into the waiting air coach the air elementals are like, we're good to go we're good to go yeah we're good to go okay let's go let's go and you're like, oh, dash yeah. uh, yes oh, no, no, go. before we go uh point down there and i'm gonna be like uh like that i'm gonna try to make it more sparkers and then uh just shadow straight in the middle of it <laughs> so now they're so now they're deaf and confused and on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, that completely throws them off, and they're just like, ah, they're, 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 and the 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 cult is like, you know, without their the leadership there, they, without being told what to do, they're like, well, you know, they're, some of them are trying to take initiative, but then they kind of like come running and they catch themselves, like hang on to the widow sill hanging out there as your sky coach drops out and away, speeding towards the pocket dimensions exit <laughs> as you as you go dashing off towards the um city in general there and um as the sounds of the cultists chanting and the angry screaming frustrated vampire ring out behind you you go dashing off and out through the pocket dimensions exit in to an unknowing bustling city as the streets of Shan once again greet you and as the um, sky um, coach goes out of the upper city district over the edge plunging down once more into the hustle bustle and anonymity of the lower city you disappear away with a safer means to get home with a happy Stefan and with reunited friends the well of many worlds folded up neatly in Trayvon's pocket <laughs> and you have escaped the mansion of Count Fabio <laughs> with some very excited squirrels they're all just like lined up on the front of the sky coach with and they're just like wee <laughs> and um, and there is a very a very happy relieved goose folk as well who has been rescued from certain death <laughs> and you go flying off down into the city and as you find yourself in safety you are thanked by Stefan and sent off using the well of many worlds now instead of these dangerous dangerous mists um, to your various homes or wherever it is that you would like to go and we shall head off to our various homes and where we would like to go as well <laughs> as I, we I would, are going to wrap things like, up there yes please please I'd like to say before everyone leaves uh, because this group offered me the chance to punch Count Fabio <laughs> I, I'd give everyone like a ticket for the Witchlight Carnival fantastic <laughs> well fantastic. I'm 100% going yeah <laughs> oh yes most definitely <laughs> absolutely excellent, excellent times sure. okay so, until another day, another place in the carnival, maybe someday, <laughs> these adventurers go off into the multiverse once more and return successful to their tree stump perch, their leafy bed in the forest, <laughs> and all their other um, spots where they return to. And we are going to leave things there. Hey, massive massive thank you to our wonderful guests today that was an absolute pleasure <laughs> um if, you, if just in case you were curious as to what we were working with here what uh, um, if people in chat who missed the start our the brief for the mission was um the pcs must steal something from a fiendish vampire it might involve elemental air there is a loyal poet who comes with you the characters start intense negotiations, so thank you, Graham John, for like, can, give me the crossbow, give me the crossbow, give me the crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> um, right at the start there. Um, early on, they meet a friend of a character, so there was uh, Hilda, the uh, the air coach driver. Yeah. Um, if things are going nowhere, they spot a lone enemy scout. That was our uh, blood bank <laughs> visitor. Uh... There. Um, not that things were going nowhere. <laughs> I tend to ignore that bit. <laughs> um, and <laughs> it finishes with a reward of a cursed but powerful magical item. Oh. 
So let's do hope this well of many worlds doesn't get further adventurers into a spot of bother. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, thank you, thank you to these wonderful, wonderful creatives of the Uncaged Goddesses project. It has been an absolute pleasure to have you here. And everyone should definitely check them out over at Angry Nerd Girl, where they're playing their three flings um, as normal, and over on Monsieur Scotty Hoots for the Chaos Cruise adventures with Dylan there as well. Um, let us go quickly around and say goodbye, and where people can find you on the internet. Um, let's go back around the other direction from before. So, ha, heyo, Zan, thank you for today, and where can people find you? Uh, hi, I'm Zan Larson, and you can find me on the internet under Pay White Rabbit. And I also have my own website, which can lead you to a store where you can buy some printed things because I'm an artist and illustrator. And that is how I know most of these people. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yes, links are going to be in chat. So everyone give them a click, give them a follow. And moving on to Dylan, please. Yeah, as uh, John said, um, you can find me on Saturdays at 3 p.m. Eastern time over on twitch.tv slash Scotty underscore hood, where I run the Chaos Crew. Uh, who just escaped an infernal super jail uh, (laughs) and possibly started a three-way, like, infernal power struggle there. So that's great. Wow. Uh, We'll see what they do next. (laughs) They are the chaos crew. (laughs) Um, Beyond that, of course, uh, you can also check out my stuff on DMs Guild, which includes Uncaged Goddesses, um, a guide to Wild Beyond the Witchlight, a guide to uh, Candlekeep Mysteries, and, uh, yeah, all that sort of stuff. Fantastic. Um, yes, there is the link for Scotty Hood's channel there and the Uncaged Goddesses and our regular Dylan command. So you already have a command <laughs> in here. Um, is <laughs> the link to the Candlekeep Mysteries guide, which will also take you oh, to yeah. Dylan's library as well if you head in that direction. Okay, thank you. Ink, please. Hi, my name is Ink. Tonight I got to play uh, Olafala. Thank you so much. I am an author and illustrator, but I am mostly known for my illustrations, but I also helped contribute to the Unhinged Anthology. Uh, usually on Friday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, you can see me over on Jess's channel, uh, Angry Nerd Girl, where we play Three Flames, which is essentially a group of three tieflings wanting through the entire Uncaged Anthology. I said it as a joke, and now it's a thing. Yay. So, yeah, it's been a it's been a two year long bit. So this is the longest running joke. Excellent. Um, my Twitter is down below, as is my uh, card, where you can find links to my other things. Excellent, Thank you. excellent. Thank you. Yes, links in chat over there. Okay, and speaking of Jess and Angry Nogo, Jess. Hey, that's <laughs> me. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. There's a link to my website on there. Um, you, I write games. I was the writing director for Uncaged Goddesses, but you can also see my stuff on like Age of Sigmar Soulbound and Pugmire and stuff like that. So check that stuff out. Um, and the newest thing that I have coming out is the newest edition of Queer Finder. So if you want Pathfinder merch, but you want it to be a little bit gay, check that out. Fantastic. Okay, thank you. And last but not least, Gwen, please. I'm Gwen DB all over the internet, and you can find me mostly on Twitter where I post illustrations because I'm an illustrator and I post uh, very occasionally non-illustration-y things um, like every now and then. A uh, call for contributors to a project like Uncaged Goddesses. Uh, <laughs> so, if you're interested in checking all that stuff out, find me on Twitter. Um, that's it. I did. I did a bunch of art and goddesses. I'm on the cover, but uh, it would definitely beautiful, would not have been as stuff. as cool of a thing without everyone else's help. So, thank you, everyone, for uh, making a really cool book. Indeed, yes, thank you for that wonderful thing and the chance to celebrate it and play together today with that random random stuff that was going on there. An absolute pleasure, as I suspected it would be. Okay, and yes, we are Phoenix Uweki, and you can find us here playing a lot of D&D and occasional um, other bits and bobs. Um, we'll be back to our regular campaigns this week. Um, Rhyme of the Frostmaiden, Out of the Abyss, Bit of Ravenloft Homebrew with Barovia and Beyond, Why, um, Well Beyond the Witchlight, and then across into Chacenta for Chacenta's Tyranny coming up from CZRPG soon um, before we end up the week there. So um, give us a follow. Um, If you do give us a follow, thank you for everyone who's followed today and the subscriptions and everything. You can jump on into our followers Discord and post about your own projects and um, look for players or look to be a player or just chat about things, get all of the news. Um, The next time we'll be playing this fun one-shot roulette style will be our um, No Kid Hungry Charity Week games. 
which are coming up where we are going to be very excited and having a good time and we are lucky enough to be joined by the fabulous folks such as James Hake, um, the head game designer over at Ghostfire Gaming and the main writer from uh, Dragon Heist, uh, which was my first ever DM'd campaign, um, and the um, wonderful, wonderful um, Kelsey Dion, from, who is Arcane Library. And then um, we are also have, I'm um, trying to remember everybody, um, Johnny Stanton, NFL, <laughs> Cleveland Browns fullback and d, &D <laughs> super nerd, uh, will be joining us, as well as Quincy from Quincy's Town. Kevin, um, Michael from Dead Gamer, and um, a few other guests that we are just doing the last little bit of confirmation with, and we're looking forward to playing with all of those wonderful people. Join us to support a wonderful cause and witness <laughs> the next whatever happens, because <laughs> we have no idea. This is One Shot Roulette, where everything is randomly generated in the spur of the moment, and it has been a pleasure as always. We are going to head off raiding somewhere. Let's see who is on ah yes our friend over at darling creep show is playing some descent into avernus another fun <laughs> a fun D, D adventure let's go and see how they're doing with that stick around for that raid if you've got them let those phoenixes fly but till next time everyone as we like to say around these parts oyasumi nasai oyasumi thank you everyone bye bye